in my ass. I just banged your wife. Name of this garbage show again that I'm on. Total nonstop impact. My name's John Capital, letter E, period, bravo. And you're listening to the Total Nonstop Impact Podcast. This is the jaw jacking Tuesday night impact. And his mother called him son because he shines like one mocha skin manimal Rohit Raju. And you are watching Total Nonstop Impact. This is Taya La Huera Loca, and you are listening to Total Nonstop Impact. The Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Total Nonstop Impact. We are the, the Rascals. Rascals. You are listening to Total Nonstop Impact Podcast, baby. Woo! And what you're really listening to is Total Nonstop Impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sitting here, you guys got a 15-minute intro of putting yourselves over. Oh. While I'm sitting here and watching Jay Bone and Kalon and your 15... I never saw a 15-minute intro of three guys putting themselves over. This is the good stuff. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans feature right here on the TNI Network. This is Trump off my co-host, Bill, J-Bone, and Alicia, and everybody. We are joined by a very special guest today. A very, very special guest today. The uh, the esteemed, the esteemed uh, ring announcer himself. He is the host of Sitting Ringside. He is probably the most legendary ring announcer still in the game today, everybody. We have the voice of Impact Wrestling with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him in here right now. Mr. David Penzer. David! How you wow. doing, sir? Wow, that's, that, was, that was pretty good, and I'm an intro guy. But hey, I, just have to say real, I just have to say real quick, uh, Russo must not, m- m- must not watch his own intro. <laughs> <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody could put themselves over for 15 minutes before he starts talking, it's Vince Russo. No kidding. No kidding. He came on here, broke our balls about that. I mean, come on. <laughs> he's he's, he's not one to talk, guys. <laughs> how you doing, David? What's new in your world? What's going on? How how you keeping busy during this lockdown and pandemic? What's going on in your world, man? Uh, just uh, you know, trying to do a little real estate thing. It's been kind of crazy, and uh, uh, do had podcasts sitting ringside. I've been honored to be able to be back with Impact Wrestling. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, we're taping in a studio with no fans because of this pandemic, but we're hoping that we could get out in front of you guys again soon. And uh, just got done um, drafting a, a, a fantasy football team and uh, and then watching uh, Impact Wrestling. Rich nice. Swan is back. Rich Swan <laughs> is back. We can't wait to talk about that. We're, <laughs> we're psyched about that. We were absolutely psyched about Rich Swan being back. But, David, I got to say, man, you, you brought it up. Let's Let's talk about it. You were in, in Impact in the TNA days, 2006, I believe you started with them initially. Um, and I want to ask you about that real quick. How did that go? Because that was that was a couple of years, about five years after WCW. I know you did the XWF for, for a bit. What was going on in between there? And how did that transition, the first run? How did, how did you get into Impact on the first time? Well, I um, was a vice president and founder of a company called Australian Airbrush Tattoos. We were in about, we were at doing very successful at the time, about 100 venues, zoos, aquariums, theme parks, and uh, cruise ships. And um, and Jeff Jarrett called me one day and said, well, um, you know, Shane Douglas usually does the promos and JB mm-hmm. usually does the rig announcing, but Shane can't be here uh, this next set of tapings. So... We're going to see how JB does as the, the interview guy and, you know, have you come up if you want to ring announce and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. And he said it probably only lasts maybe one or two times. Well, it lasted five years because thank God JB was so good on the mic in the, on the stick backstage. So, uh, <laughs> so it lasted five years. And uh, 
you know, I, I did that while I ran my company and, and Jeff gave me the free reign to, to do both at the same time. And it was fun to be back and great extra money. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. nice. I, I got to say, David, I went to one of those XWF shows in um, Hammond, Indiana, where you, you were there, I believe. You were you at that of course, show? Yeah, 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 for sure. I remember yeah. now. There's a there's yeah. a match that sticks out to me because I'm in Chicago, so Hammond, the old Civic Center, where it's classic venue, right for sure. wrestling. Uh, one match stuck out to me, yeah. and I'll never forget it. It was a very young Josh Matthews, and uh, taking on a a very hard hitting, I think Kid Cash, I believe <laughs> he took out on that show, and Cash uh, was yeah, I was. <laughs> Good. I was going to say, for lack of a better term, I Cash was really actually... uh, taught taught the youngin something that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was the yeah, I was the head of talent relations for uh the short-lived XWF and um I actually brought Josh Matthews in. He had just finished Tough Enough and we were starting a a, a cruiserweight division and uh had some big names and thought Josh would fit right in, so I gave him a call and and a young Josh Matthews uh had his first little taste of fame, but unfortunately as we all know it never really went anywhere. No. Uh, it was, but he he he, re- he rebounded he he, he re- he rebounded in a fun, in a good way. Yeah, the timing on that show, on that, on that promotion was all wrong. Uh, TBS had just, uh, or TNT had just thrown off, one, still what was the top twenty and the top twenty cable ratings uh, Monday Night Show, and just basically fire sailed it to uh, to Vince McMahon. So everybody, nobody wanted to to be in the wrestling business anymore. Yeah, it was it was a tough time, a very transitional time in the business, and um, yeah. a lot of talent floating around everywhere. I mean, we, we, now, David, we do the throwback shows. We've been doing a on, on Thursdays. We all review the um, the old TNA Asylum shows, and we just we keep talking about the amount of names that keep showing up in two thousand two and oh three. All these unsigned names, and it was an it was an exodus, man. Around that time, just everybody was everywhere. It was you weren't signed to up north, you were everywhere else, pretty much it seemed. Yeah, every time I see the Piper one, I always I always get a kick out of that because I I arranged that, uh, and I was the middleman between that whole appearance, and Piper always felt like uh, uh, Jeff double crossed him with with the Harris brothers, and mm. uh, I never knew the real story. So um, so yeah, it was interesting. I was uh, his tour manager, uh, Roddy Piper. We had just gotten back to Nashville where we started after thirty five days on the road all across the country, and. Uh, he thought, hey, you know, I have a book pr- to promote. These guys have a pay-per-view. I'd like to go say a couple words to Vince Russo and uh, shoot with it. So I called Jeff, and it happened. But literally, we pulled up on the tour bus as the show was starting. So when Mike and Don were, were surprised, that was legit. I, Mike might have known, but uh, it's not like Piper was in the back hanging out for the whole day. We literally pulled up in his music plate. I gotta yeah. say, you know, and, I, and I'm gonna let you guys talk. I'm sorry if, if I keep talking, oh, Jay, and going, Alicia. I, there's one thing I gotta mention here, though, because David, you were the tour manager on his book tour, correct? And then around oh, th- was it 2003, I believe. 2000, um, 2002. I yeah, went to the signing. To the end of- I, I went to one of the signings here in, I think it was Des Plaines, Illinois, at a Borders, and I. I gotta say, now that I'm thinking about, it, well, you well, you might have been sitting in there with him during the signing, I believe, right? Were you were you, would you be hanging out with him during the book signing? Oh, oh, hell yeah, yeah. I, I, was, probably, I, I, I was in charge of the whole tour, so I probably met you in there because I did. Um, I kicked myself to this day, David. I never, I didn't take a camera with me, and I didn't get a, a photo of him. But I did get an autograph, and then he uh, he did hug me and told me he loved me, and uh, he's like, told me, "God bless" it, eighteen hundred times, and he gave me a big old, big old, big. Piper bear hug and it was awesome. Made my whole day. But, yeah, he's, a, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a great he's guy. Missed. Great guy. Jay, and I don't think I have a picture with him either. If it makes you, wow. I don't think I have a picture with him either. If it makes you feel better. Oh, that's a bummer. It just, I, I, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. Now it's so easy with the phones, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Yeah. But, but uh, Bill, I know you're itching to ask something. I know you <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You set this whole thing up, and I'm sitting here yakking away with David Penzer. Go ahead. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll, there's, there's, there's obviously there's a lot there because, as we said, you're you are the uh, the voice of impact for now two runs, two runs. Uh, but I guess uh, we'll go with something pretty much. I guess during that, uh, I guess compare because uh, I know when we've talked to Kai's kind of on the throwback compared to today. How would you kind of compare that first run that you were with TNA to now? I would say like the locker room, 
the talent? Like, what, what do you see? Do you see similarities, differences, positives between the two? There's some similarities, but man, you know, I, I was, I, I talk about this. I've talked about this a few times on different podcasts and the fact that you have to think about this. We've been doing these studio tapings now for what, six months, five months, seven mm-hmm. months, five, almost five not months. Not sure how yeah. long. Not, not, not one, not one, and correct me if I'm wrong, spoiler has gotten out. And you know that the, mm-hmm. you know, that the talent loves talent loves to send out spoilers mm-hmm. and the you know production people love to and and not one has gotten out and that's just it, it's it's a, a byproduct of how close and tight and all in and I hate to use that word but all in that <laughs> locker room is I've never seen anything like it there it is a group of young talented ladies and gentlemen and um, the production staff works their butt off. Everybody multitasks and does three or four different things, including myself. And um, and we work our butts off to get it done. The talent works their butt off. And having some of these uh, experienced veterans in is just icing on the cake, quite frankly. And you know, yeah, and, and I would say you're definitely right, David, because there really there was zero spoilers. And then, like, technically, some of the dirt sheets were starting to try to run with something a couple weeks ago, like that the Bound for Glory card was out there. But uh, that already got, like, it was told not true. I didn't even look what it was. But all everyone did when Eric Young won the title last week, that pretty much put a kibosh on whatever was out there. So either they got fed some bad information or uh, they were just doing their fake wrestling news, as we like to say around here. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah we, I didn't. We I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But go ahead. No, go ahead, David. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, so, all right, guys. This is this is. Uh, I watch. I watch. Uh, every I, every watch show on Fox News called the Five. Oh, we're we're losing you a little bit there. The connection's a little choppy. I don't know if we're. Uh, if you can still hear us. You're coming in a little choppy, though. You're breaking up a bit. Uh, I think we might have lost him. Yeah. Yeah. David. Oh, wait, there he is. I think he's back now. Okay. He's... David, are you back? Let's uh, let's try to reconnect him, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. David, you can hear yeah, us? There you are. Well, you can hear you now. No, nah, it's still coming in a little choppy. It keeps coming up. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll see if we can get them reconnected here in a second, guys. But um, yeah, damn technology, as everybody's saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll we'll see if we can get them. Re- David, if you want to, if you want to uh, cut out and come come back in, let's give that. a Yeah, shot. just jump back into the room again. We'll see yeah. if that works. We'll yeah, disconnect and reconnect. Usually, that fixes it for anyone that has a problem. Yeah, we'll see, but. Um, but no, it's really cool. We're off to a good start here. At least, uh, you know, definitely it was a good conversation. David Penzer's the voice of Empire. He cut out. He's, he let that, let's have All him right. pop back in in a second here, guys. But that's very cool. Uh, you, Bill, you mentioned something really cool, though. Um, two runs, right? That's interesting. I, like, he's been there for two different eras, and that's something we definitely want to uh, point out because he's seen two sides of that coin. But <laughs> when, he comes, when he comes back, uh, Jay, I know Jay was, as we all know, Jay was extremely heated with those dirt sheets putting out that fake card. Yes, that, that's why. I, I was <laughs> oh, waiting for two, Jay to jump in there. <laughs> two, in, two in two weeks. I mean, what is he going to put out next week? You know, the elephant thing? The elephants are going to show up for Bound for Glory? I mean, come on. I mean, they were talking about elephants today on the show. They were talking. They were, they big were, that's, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be in Sean Ross Sapp's next one. He's going to book the Elephant Battle Royal for Bound for Glory. I guarantee it. <laughs> Now, Bill, see if you can get a hold fact, of David. I might, I might even, yeah. I might even tip him off on that one. See if you can get a hold of David. See, make sure he's able to connect back in, and we'll, yeah. uh, we'll come back and and, yeah, and pick up guess. where we left off there. But what a, what a show, Alicia. What's going on? Sorry, you're. We're, we're, I'm just talking like crazy today. I get, oh, I get, it's all good. I get Marky on these things, guys. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yes, yes. Good episode today. We're gonna, we got some. I know J Bone. You got a couple pieces of news. We'll talk about as soon as David's out. We'll talk. We'll do the news. Kalon Kyle will not be on today, guys. He's uh, he's got a new show though. We will mention that <laughs> Kyle does have a new show. KL's hit and run, where a week <laughs> later, a week after Impact, after we do this show and Impact airs, he does he does a express version review of the show 
I think usually, at the, Bill, the idea is to do it the day of, right? Correct? The day of the Yeah, like the I think current. like the night before, the mm -hmm. day of, like for you get that kind of recap. Like if for some reason you missed the episode or didn't watch the full review, mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can watch this uh, in less than half the time. <laughs> uh, I think the goal is to be a quarter of the time, but about half the time. Half the time. And uh, we, we still hit everything just tight. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's, it's, as we said, it's the Ingrid version of the show because it's not off the rails. It's, yeah, Ingrid, Ingrid will like that one. It's completely on the rails. There's no distraction. <laughs> it's full. It's a full on review. No, no bullshit. I think David's coming right. back in though here. I believe so. All right, let's see if we can get him back in here. Hang on a second. All right, David, you back on? Can we hear you? Um, I called in from my phone. Could you hear me better? Perfect. Okay, yep. there you go. Yeah, yeah. it must good. have been a different issue. <laughs> very good. Very nice. Very nice. All right, sorry about that. Little interruption, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, he's back, everybody. All right, so let's pick that up. Uh, we were talking about nothing getting leaked out, and that's something we talk about a lot here, David. Um, J-Bone over here is, is extremely against those those dirt sheets and how they spread a bunch of crap. And, Jay, you know, Jay went on a huge rant. A couple weeks ago, so Jay, I'll let you not don't yell at David about it now, but go ahead and tell him oh, how much you hate those those spoilers. <laughs> oh, I, I can't stand it. It's it's just one of those things, you know. For for how many years this brand of wrestling that we love so much has de had to deal with, you know, they, they get tapings and then someone's in the crowd and then they, they always leak the results to everyone a week ahead of time. And, and and don't tell me that doesn't affect the viewership in some some way, shape, or form. I mean, no matter how good it is, you know, some fans still want to see it. But if it's all over there, then then why would you you want to see it? You know? Yeah. So that's a yeah, testament I mean, to you guys. It's, it's part. It's part of. It's part of the the whole social media, internet, uh, you know, uh, world that we live in. So there's no getting around it, really. If there's fans in the building. For example, though, last week, I, I loved to watch the reaction on, and not all of it was positive, but I loved to see the reaction on social media when um, when uh, Eric Young won the belt, you know, because mm -hmm. nobody knew. It. So, you know, it's fun to gauge that reaction. It'd be fun to gauge the reaction of, you know, Rich Swan coming back. And, and so, you know, at some point, we're going to be back in, in front of an audience, knock on wood, and that's just going to get out again. But... Um, my point was more not a rant on spoilers getting out because it's just part of the environment. It was more about the closeness of the locker room uh, and how everybody's really, like I said, all in as far as uh, as far as getting things going. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to see, and that's one uh, a great thing about the locker room that we've always you can tell as fans that it's such a synergetic locker room that it really is focused and, and cares about you know, one, one vision, one mission. So I, we, I love seeing that. And I love that we, at least in a day and age of spoilers and technology, we were, we got to have those surprise moments where we got to be shocked at Eric on winning the title. Nothing got out. We got to be surprised. And that was one of the best things about it. So we were shocked. We definitely were. Dude. We were shocked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, no complaints. Yeah. Well, there I think that's why we were all such a big fan of Slammiversary for that reason. There were some people who reached out and said, you know, to me and said, you know, I thought it was too soon. I thought Eddie Edwards should have kept it up. You know, there's no right, right or wrong answers in this business. Some, you know, not everybody's going to love what you do. Um, you know, there's some things that are easy. You know, the debuts at uh, at Slammiversary, that's easy. You know, that's you know, that's a guaranteed knock knock out of the ballpark home run. But, um, but you know, changing belts like that, everybody's going to have their own thoughts. But. Uh, my point was it was interesting to see it in real time without the spoilers out there. So everybody already knew and we're already talking about it. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, so this, uh, so David, this coming back this uh, during this run now, how did this all come about? I know you mentioned a little bit on, on, on sitting ringside, your podcast, but, uh, but you know, just for people here who might not have heard that episode, how did this comeback come about? This is the craziest story and I'm not embellishing. I'm not making up. I swear. I, I get my wife on to to, uh, to confirm. So, um, if you remember uh, on AEW to build up one of the main events, they had Gary Capetta come in and do a um, a wave. You recall? Mm -hmm. So I was watching the show, and my wife looked at me, and my wife was watching. We were watching AEW live, and I said, um, 
I said, and, and she looked at me and she said, why wouldn't they bring you in? Because me and Jericho were buddies. He actually texted yeah. me and said he had pitched me. But like I said to my wife, it wasn't my spot. I never did anything like that because we had uh, we had the best of all time, uh, Mean Gene. But before Mean Gene, Gary did a lot of those type segments, weigh-ins and stuff like that. So it made sense. So she's going, she's going up the stairs because she always goes to bed a lot earlier than I do because I'm a late-night guy. And um, she looks at me and she says, are you sure you're not upset that you weren't didn't get the call? And I said, Lisa, I swear to you. I said, I'm done with this business. I have my little podcast. Every once in a while, once you know, this is before life was uh, was stopped, halted. I said, every once in a while, somebody brings me into a, a convention. And other than that, I'm very happy. Two hours later, I get a text from Scott Dear Moore. Tender, <laughs> are you available next Friday and Saturday? And have you ever done play-by-play? So my response was, yes, I'm available, and not in 25 years, but I'm willing to try. So <laughs> it turns out they flew me up to Atlanta and um, and had me do the play-by-play for the, the one-hour special TNA special, There's No Place Like Home, which, thank God, I thought I wouldn't call it my best work by far, but at least it was, it's, it's not an embarrassment. I thought I did okay. But, no, uh, you I did great. Really yeah. I, I told my wife, I said, you know, and I told, I told Scott, I said, you know, if you don't try, you can't, you can't, you know, you don't even have a shot. So I got to go try this. And if I embarrass myself, so be it. Wouldn't be the first time. So, <laughs> so long story short. So go back. I was supposed to do the, the pay-per-view uh, play-by-play. And um, and that didn't happen, as we all know. And so a couple weeks after the pandemic, we're watching uh, 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 All Elite Wrestling again on Wednesday, me and my wife. Um and uh, that was right after the pandemic when they were taping in uh, in, in uh, the gym there with the with the it was a, like a uh, wrestling school with the green astroturf, and yeah. um, and and they had uh, you know as you remember like six feet apart they had some of the wrestlers that weren't in those segments out there cheering and booing, um, and my wife looked at me and she said, I don't think I would want you to do that. You know, because you got to remember, back then, nobody knew if, like, everybody that got this died. You know, right, now we right. know a, little bit, a lot more about it, but we didn't, nobody really knew. And um, and, and so uh, so I said, Lisa, you don't have to worry. Nobody's calling me. <laughs> Two hours later, I get a text from Scott Jim Moore. I swear to God, this is not an embellishment. Two hours later, I get a text from Scott Jim Moore. Uh, would you like to come to Nashville to tape TV at a studio? <laughs> and so the next morning when my wife woke up, I had to explain to her that I had accepted uh, uh, the, uh, the the opportunity. I just told her, you know, I'm go- I, I, you know, it's a great opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to last. She, her only, she finally was okay with it, but her only condition was for the first one that I drive, which I did, and it mm. sucked. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I didn't want to get on a plane at that point. Bob Ryder was basically begging me not to let him book, let me book him uh, and book me a ticket. Because you know, again, nobody really knew what this thing was, but uh, yeah. but that's how it happened. And I do, you know, I do the the ring announcing, I do the uh, the around the rings, as you guys know, and I, I produce yeah. a lot, some of the digital content backstage, uh, which I really enjoy doing that as well, working with the young talent. So, so it's been a blast. I'm honored to be back, and I'm just uh, I'm I'm here for the ride as long as it lasts. That's wonderful. I, I got to feel like like Scott's doing this on purpose. Like it's almost <laughs> like he's planning this uh, to call you on a Wednesday, two hours after the show ends, knowing Lisa's going upstairs for the night, and that's when he calls you to, to purposely do this twice in a row. <laughs> but, no, that's funny. Total coincidence. I mean, I know Scott going back thirty years, and we're friendly, but but you know he doesn't know my life. He doesn't know my life. He doesn't know you know when I go to bed. You know he doesn't know stuff like that. It's just. Scott, if you know Scott, Scott's usually up until three in the morning, if not five. So he's uh, he, he get catches a couple hours of sleep every night or morning, and that's about it. So uh, by the time he gets down on his list to me, it's usually about two o'clock. Now, now <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, David. You booked Scott for some WCW Saturday Night, correct? Back in the day, did you book him to? Yeah, I was Scott, for some I was, I was, Yeah, I was his booker and. Uh, we, we made a deal because I got twenty five dollars a guy for that uh, the guys I brought from Florida, and um, so well worked out a deal where he would come up and he would book his guys who were his guys, 
and he and the four guys would give me ten dollars each, and they give Scott the other fifteen. So okay. it was easy money for me. Now, I, and just for the record, I wasn't getting paid by WCW at the time. So I'm living off of this booking fee, which was very common back then. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody did it. I had Mike Jackson who kind of invented it on my podcast around and talked about how the whole thing came to be. But um, but yeah, so um, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, me and Scott go way back, and he likes to say that. Uh, he, he, I don't know if he likes to say. He likes to say at one point uh, early in his career, I was his stooge, or he was my stooge, and boy, how the times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> how about that, huh? Life, life really comes full circle in a weird way sometimes. But uh... hey, you know what? <laughs> if, if 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 being a stooge to a good friend of mine who I have a total respect for is my way, my path to get back in the business, I'll do it every day and twice on Sunday. <laughs> now you mentioned around the ring, as you know, David. We tag you like crazy in that we are huge fans of around the ring especially since you took over and we got to be the only podcast that really like like we we do a whole show dedicated to explosion also you know, on sun on sunday nights and we just love the around the ring segment are you having you know, tell us about that are you having fun doing it meeting these young guys uh getting to know some of the some of this new talent i mean getting to bring them to the public a little bit in a sense right yeah do you, do you see the Susie one no, the Susie one hasn't aired yet, has it? No, I don't think no, so. No, the Susie one was one of the first ones I did. If you don't have a chance to watch it, go back and if you could pull it up. It, I basically, I did seven or eight minutes, and I, all I, Tommy Jr. said, this is her character, go. And yeah, you know, was, we did do that one. one. Yeah, oh, it was yeah, it was, it was so weird, but yeah, we, we did We that did one, do yeah. that one, David. Yeah, come and think we did do that one. <laughs> halfway, halfway through, she's like, I used to kill people, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but Scott, Scott and Josh said you're going to do around the ring, and I said, "What is around the ring?" And they said, "Just just talk to somebody for for six or eight minutes." And I said, well, "Could you shoot?" And they were like, "Well, I mean, you know, you could shoot, but you try to you know keep it impact focused." You know what I mean? So you know, we talk about where guys people broke in and working on the indies, but you know, I don't talk. I don't ask them. If their dream is to go to WWE and headline WrestleMania. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. we, right, right. We, we, you know, we, we keep it focused on the product. But and I kept saying to Scott, "You sure I could shoot?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you can shoot." So I don't know what it was before this because I never saw it before. But I, I, I just done what I do. It's sort of a little mini sitting ringside, um, and um, and, and literally I don't do any research, uh, which I do for my podcast. But I just sit down. And shoot the, you know what, with uh, with with somebody, whether it be a knockout or or a, or a, somebody on a roster, a male, male roster, and um, and I'm glad you guys enjoy it. It's fun, and I'm just, just trying to figure out what happened to part two of um, of Ace Austin. Well, it's coming up this week, I think. Oh, oh, oh yes. no, 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 I went to one? Ethan. <clears throat> yeah, oh. yeah, they, we did we did a three part with Ethan, which is. Tremendous! I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I really enjoyed that one, and because uh, he's such a big fan. But then, um, but then uh, somehow the second part of Ace Austin got lost. So I, I had oh, said, they got to uh, bring that back because yeah, that first yeah. part was great. Because I was looking forward to that airing. Tom- that was supposed to air tomorrow. The second part of Ace Austin. Yeah, that was supposed. Yeah, to- yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get it. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll get it back on. But um, yeah. Unless for some reason something happened and they didn't capture it, or or you know, they, these things usually happen towards the end of the tapings, and I'm begging people to stick around because like i said we're, we're everybody's trying to create so much co- uh, so much content we got different crews doing digital uh, promos doing promos for impact doing stuff for uh you know the worldwide um uh, companies that that they use our that that have our product on their television and mm-hmm. so and then plus doing the matches and especially now because you know in the, in the old days when you wrestled in, in front of fans we started at seven thirty, so we had the whole day to get that stuff done. Now uh, we start taping at two, so oh, in the wow. studio. So, so you know, trying to get that done. So, so, um, but yeah, I I enjoy it. I'm glad that somebody enjoys it. And um, like I said, I hope to be able to keep doing them. I'm just I'm curious how long it's going to take before I have to start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're we're big fan. It really is, guys, and everybody in the chat who's watching live. If you haven't checked out David's podcast, uh, Sitting Ringside, it's it's a great show. I'm a huge fan, David. I've been listening for a long time. I'm actually we're actually really good friends with Mike Freeland, who used to work for you at one point. And um, 
So I go back to that those days. And um, but but this is like a little like you just said, David, it's like a mini sitting ringside the around the ring. So it is kind of cool. So if you like what he's doing, guys, on around the ring, go check out sitting ringside because I absolutely one of the, one of the things I love about it, Dave, about your podcast is that um not only do you get a lot of impact, you know, talent impact folks on there, especially like like Scott's been on and whatnot. Like you get that inside information, but you also get a lot of guests that not other podcasts are getting, you know, you, you get people that not everybody has. And I like that you would get to hear other stories that not that are being told 200 times on an, across like a litany of podcasts. So that's it's all really cool. Is that what you were going for with the show to kind of give a nice mix between uh, between guests? I, I didn't know what I was going for. Mike Freeland, who you mentioned, co- contacted me and said, I think you should do a podcast. And I said, what's a podcast? <laughs> and I mean, I knew what a podcast was because I had done others, but I'm like, yeah. And what am I supposed to say? So, so we we we, we came up with something, and um, I found um, the, the company that uh, we've been under called uh, Radio Influence. They're local, mm-hmm. but they do national podcasting, um, and so they produce it and promote it and and, and do all that and uh, tape it and edit it. And so all I got to do is have a conversation every week and. Uh, it, it's what it started out. It didn't turn out to be. It started out to be more of me and Freeland talking about wrestling, and it morphed into um, if me and fill in the blank talent were driving home after a TV taping, or driving from one town from Greenville, South Carolina, to Charlotte, North Carolina, to make the next town. Uh, what would we talk about? We talk tell tell stories because back in the old days, that's all there was. There was no internet there was no cell phone there was no satellite uh, radio so we told stories to, to to pass time by usually about you know if it was somebody new that you didn't know usually about your you know how you got involved in the business so that's what i try to do and you know freeland it really didn't work out for him because we didn't have a place for him but i'll be forever indebted and, and so that's what i try to do is just have a conversation with somebody and um like i'm driving with him to the next town and uh you know we, we, we you know we try and uh uh, we try to book, you know, people that aren't on everybody's uh, radar. And uh, sometimes, you know, you got to give in. And I had to get Gallows on when he was going on every show in the world to promote um, their their pay-per-view, uh, Talking Shop of Maine. <laughs> Which you were on, too. Like to throw in some, uh, some not- <laughs> yes, that, that, I, that I cursed on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a blast as well. Um, we, uh... oh, go ahead, dude. No, it was fun. I swear to God. Uh, we were the we were like the only show that did a post show review of Talking Shop, and out of nowhere, David, we got like an insane amount of plays. Like people were like, people were actually reviewing this goddamn show, and like they came <laughs> in and they watched it our review live, and it was unbelievable the response that we got because people were just shocked that somebody was actually reviewing what was dubbed the worst pay per view of all time. So <laughs> we enjoyed it. We had a fun, we had a fun time with it for sure. Uh, but Jay, Bob, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I don't know I'm sitting why you talking. review that, but God bless you. Guys. Yeah, we, we somehow we and Jay. I think Jay. Well, what did we do? Two hours with that thing? We we did like two and a half hours of a review on that. Yeah, that I think time. you were head in head with the actual time of the pay per view. Unbelievable! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we got out of it. We were, and we and the, the numbers are still climbing. In fact, the numbers are almost neck and neck with um, Slammiversary. A couple <laughs> couple thousand views each. It's the biggest thing on this channel right now, which is absolutely hilarious. But hey. We, We'll take the views. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, you know, with, with with the whole world getting flipped on its head and everything in the last, you know, five six months, uh, everybody's doing something new, some kind of new hobby, or maybe they're 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 doing something new in the kitchen or something new to their household. Have you done anything new? And well, I, I guess I could throw out the word adventurous if it is adventurous. Have you have you started anything new? during this pandemic, during all this COVID crap to uh, entertain yourself or change life up a little for yourself? Anything? That's a great question. And the answer is not one thing. (laughs) (laughs) It's all right. You know, know, I, you know, I, I, I had to get creative, you know, when there was no sports on and I'm addicted to cable news. So there's no, no, um, no lack of cable news, uh, even during the pandemic at the world. Oh, so, um, tell me about it. And yeah, so, uh, so I'm addicted to cable news and, um, I'm a, 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 a politics junkie and, um, and, uh, I, uh, I love fantasy football. I love the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, 
I had to get a little creative when there was no sports on. You know, I was up at three in the morning drinking vodka, watching um, MP Arena South Korean baseball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Some, somehow found myself entertained by it, but uh, I don't know if it was the vodka or the, the just having something on there where somebody <laughs> swinging a bat and, and could hit a hit a ball. But uh, but yeah, no, not really. I'm a pretty lazy guy when it. Uh, I'm motivated by by wrestling. And I'm motivated by certain things, but when it comes to like you know taking up a hobby or uh, uh, you know or, or you know doing a project in the house, you know that that motivates me very very little. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm little inside information. I, I don't like change. So I just stick with what, uh, what I enjoy and hope my wife sticks with me for another year. <laughs> just year hey, to year, right? As I, long as you can get to each year. <laughs> I wake up every morning and thank God my mind hasn't left me either, because let me tell you with the way things are going and just, you know, mood swing, you get upset about stuff you see on the news and, or, or you hear about, uh, something affecting a family member which i mean this has touched everyone so yeah it's uh it's crazy she's been with me 30 years that 30 years with me seems like like 150 years with like somebody normal so i just i i i I, I, it blows my mind but i don't question it and i just kind of go on being me and sometimes she gets annoyed and sometimes she she's happy and she's still here and that's all that i care about can we Dang, can we get can we get her on the show and ask her as a bonus a, a question how the hell she did it for thirty years maybe it should be some good advice for people. <laughs> She's actually in bed, but a, a, another time for sure. I, I, I think she'd probably love to. And and then you know she, she trashed me. I'm sure you know. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not the easy, I'm not the easiest guy to live with. And uh, you know, and then you throw me back on a wrestling show and have a podcast that people listen to, and you know, my head tends to not you know swell a little bit you know and she's like All right, sure. you know. i try not to i try not to you know i try not to let it but you know but like and, and i'm being honest i was joking about that but i'm being honest i mean your intro you know to, to for somebody to call me whether it's true or not you know the the i forget the exact words but the uh, famous ring announcer i'm paraphrasing i don't remember what you said still still in the business that, I mean, how, how you know, as somebody who grew up a wrestling fan at age 11 and lo- and strive to be in the business, how could that not, you know, uh, perk you up and make you feel a little bit of pride? Now, I'm not saying it's true, uh, no, it's but true. Uh, I'll take I'll, but I'll take it. Well, listen, listen sure. it, it, it is true. Dave. I mean, think about it. I was thinking, you know, I'm I'm 39 in, in a month and I've been watching since I was a little kid. And there's been ring announcers that have gone through my lifetime that I you know, that are that are voices of of generations of the companies I grew up watching. And you are a huge part of it. And I was thinking back to my teenage years, it was David Penzer, WCW. And I just, the fact that you're, and, and I'm and I'm a big, I was a big WCW guy, I'm a big TNA and the Impact guy. That's really my my primary companies that I watch. And and just know, and hearing your voice still, as I'm looking at 40 now, you know, it's like, man, I've been hearing his voice since I was a kid. And it's like, here I, and then it's a trip for me to have you on the show and talk to you like this. It's, it's really cool just to, it's you're still there and you're still part of this business. And it's like having that familiarity with something of, of a time where I was really, you know, I was growing up and in, in, in watching this business and falling in love with it every week, having that constant, you're one of those few constants that are still there of that period. So it's really cool that, that you are and, and, and part of the company that I love so much now today. Did so you I hear it, that. It, Did it, you hear that? <laughs> that's, that's, me, that's me knocking on wood because uh uh every day i wake up i haven't even gotten like frequent like, like a, a southwest or a frequent flyer uh cards again because and and people say well, why don't you get you know you're staying at hotels you, you're blind now well, I, I'm, I'm afraid that if i get too cocky that i'm gonna uh, that i'll that i'll uh, uh something will happen so i'm uh, at some point you'd think uh i would you know get a southwest frequent flyer card or something but uh <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm superstitious that's why i knock on wood and in my mind if i get cocky and start getting all these cards dr moore's gonna call me and say hey man i can't bring you up anymore so i'm not gonna tempt fate man i'm just i'll, I'll eat the points and i'll take the uh i'll take the job nice <laughs> nice well i'm not I've, i'm talking so much i know alicia's sitting here I, I, alicia you got anything for david i, I don't mean to keep keep talking here alicia's sitting here very patient Waiting to ask you something, I'm sure. I think she fell asleep. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, I fell asleep. I'm just here sitting quietly. I don't know. Did you make any bread? 
during this interesting year we're having? <laughs> what? 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 I said, did you bake any bread? <laughs> My wife? Did you bake any I bread? Think, I don't think Dave's baking. He's not baking bread. I don't think David's baking bread. <laughs> <anything. laughs> I'm saying picking up any unusual hobbies. Yeah, no, like I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm a creature of habit. I do what I do. And yeah, I'll be honest. When it first started, I, you know, I found myself drinking more than I should. And, uh, and I got that under control very quickly, but. It's like, you know, like we said, there was such an unknown and it's like, why the heck not? You know, you can't go to work. You can't, well, you know, there's nothing to do. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't do this. You can't do that. You don't know if you're going to die. It's like, you know, when people have hurricane parties. So it was like a week long hurricane party. And then I, I rolled out of bed one day at 11 o'clock and I said, yeah, that ain't going to work very well. So I, I got that <laughs> and it But I, I, I know that, I know that this is where I just skyrocketed. I just, Local delivery at one point was up at 530. Hobby, uh, just a few cocktails and watch a little wrestling and watch some baseball and fantasy. Just had a fantasy draft with we got an impact wrestling versus NFL analyst league, experts league. Uh, oh, so we just did that today. It's me and Eric Tompkins, uh, director for the oh. head of production, and Eric Young, world champion, and um. Tommy Dreamer and um, uh, and uh, Brian Meyer, who are all big uh, uh, big uh, fantasy football fans, against uh, Adam Rank, who's from NFL uh, NFL Fantasy Live. Uh, James Jones, who used to play wide receiver for the uh, for the Green Bay Packers. David Carr, who played quarterback for the Houston Texans, and Mike Florio, uh, head of Pro Football Talk. And then one one girl who. Uh, brand new on NFL Fantasy Live, but uh, so we just drafted today. It was the fastest draft I ever had. They usually take two hours. This match is thirty six minutes. I had it. Oh wow, that's quick. That's quick draft. I did two. I did one Saturday and one Sunday, and they were like an hour and a half each. But for me, that was a quick draft. Our draft in person used to be like three to four hours. So Jeez. that's that's a quick draft, which I'm My glad to see. Was- my head was spinning, and Adam Rick was like, are we going too fast? And I'm like, you know, I wanted to play with the big boys. I'm just going to have to deal with it. Did, uh, David, has, has Glenn Gilberti infiltrated your <laughs> fantasy league yet? Yes or no? Tell us the truth here. Has he Glenn tried Gilberti to find a way? Glenn not in any of my fantasy leagues. No, I, I joined two new leagues this year. One is uh, <laughs> the one I just told you, and the other one is Tommy Dreamer's League, and we drafted last, last night. And um, uh, so uh, – those are the two new ones I did. I was offered a spot in the old TNA fantasy football league that uh, I've always wanted to be a part of going back to when I was there uh, in oh, wow. TNA. And the whole deal was uh, if you wanted to be in the league, you had to find your way to Jeff Garrett's house for the draft. And he could toast and serve, serve you know, drinks and, and it'd be a big party. But I never got the opportunity. I don't know if Glenn is in that one, which is why I bring that up. But Eric Young offered me the opportunity to get into that one. And, you know, we talk about not wanting to get divorced. If I'd have done a fantasy draft on Sunday night when we were supposed to be on a lake with all our, all of our great friends, yeah, she probably wouldn't be here tonight to pick people like she did. So uh, I, I had to pass on that one. And I, I specifically said to Eric, I said, man, I've been waiting to be in the sleep for 16 years. But if I do this draft, I'm going to be divorced. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, gotta be careful with those fantasy drafts. Yeah, no kidding, man. A lot of relationships family. have been ended with fantasy sports. <laughs> yeah, she's cool with fantasy, and you know, I watch Red Zone all day Sunday, and she rolls her eyes, and I root against the Bucks, not because <laughs> I don't like the Bucks, but because I'm rooting for different players from other teams, not other teams specifically. And um, and uh, but yeah, but we had plans uh, with very close friends of ours on a on a big dock on the lake. Uh, and um, if I'd have blown that off, uh, yeah, that, that would have been ugly. So I, I had to uh, forego the TNA league, and I guess I guess that I, I just I, I guess I wasn't meant to be in that league for whatever reason. But I don't know if Joe Birdie's in that. I don't know that I want to play fantasy with Joe Birdie. <laughs> that's, that's what I was asking. I mean, yeah, you, number one, has he infiltrated any of your leagues? Number two, do you even want to? Play fantasy with Glenn Gilbert. <laughs> I'd like to I, beat Glenn Gilbert. Oh, and there you go. It, but, uh, <laughs> Let's but, uh, 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 oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just say, do you mind if we take a few questions from the audience? Have we got a live crowd here. They're asking a bunch of questions. Do you mind if I throw a few at you? No, not at all. 
All right, let me throw a couple at you now. Somebody did ask. Critical Sting is asking, who from the Impact roster currently has caught your eye the most since returning? Big fan of Ace Austin. Ace um, Austin, yeah. I'll give you a little inside story. First time I was up in Nashville and I saw Ace Austin a couple of times. And like I said, I was producing the uh, the digital some of the digital content. Oh. And... Um, I pulled Ace aside. He had never said a word to me. Didn't even know me. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he knew who I was, but probably not because he's in that section of time where I disappeared pretty much. And um, but I said, I said, let me tell you a story. I said, do you remember? Uh, do you remember the um, market specific promos? And he said no. And I said, you young mother. Uh, <laughs> do you guys remember the market specific promo? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Saturday morning, so, like we're coming to the Civic Center and we're gonna yeah, show yeah. you what's up. <laughs> so I told him, I said I used to produce those for WCW. We were in a little gray box with an air conditioning and a camera, and I used to produce them. Me and Gene did them, and then Lee Marshall, and later on at the very end, I actually did them. And um, I said there was a young guy who reminds me a lot of you who used to hang out in that gray box. Because he wasn't that good on the microphone, because he was green, but he had, you could tell he had a ton of talent and he wanted to learn. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. I so we get to the end of the story. So, and not in a not in a mean way, not in a nasty way. But he just didn't know how I was going. And I said, I said, uh, little by little, he get the opportunity to do some promos, and some were good, and some were bad. But me and Gene always, uh, you know, got him through it, and you know. He turned into one of the greatest talkers in the history of wrestling. I said, that guy's name is Chris Jericho. And his eyes lit up. Like, you know, I just wow. gave him 10 grand. And I, and true story. I said, my point to you is, I don't know if you're a great promo. I don't know if you're a bad promo, but I know you're young and talented. So look for opportunities to get in front of a microphone and get in front of a camera. Because the more you do it, the better you'll be. And... I mean, I meant that from the heart that, uh, you know, I, I, I think he's uh, tremendously talented. And that's not to slight anybody else, man. The whole damn roster talented. I watched TJD and Chris Bay tonight. I watched Motor City Machine Guns and oh, and uh, so the great. Rascals tonight. I mean, you know, the the, the, the women, you know, uh, Kai, you know, Jordan, uh, Jordan Grace and um, and Deanna Perrazzo put two classics out there, the, the Iron Man and the, and the one at Slammiversary. I mean, so I'm, I'm, yes, they, they asked about one person, and I thought I'd, since I had a kind of cool story about it, I'd mention. But I had never seen Rich Swan wrestle before Slammiversary for whatever reason, because I don't really pay attention to the Indies. I was blown away, like Rey Mysterio blown away. Incredible. It was, it was like, oh, oh yeah. my God, look, look at all this. God can do it. So, so, um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's just stacked with a ton of young talent, a ton, ton of young ladies and gentlemen, and, um, I, I, you know, I, I name Ace Austin because he's one of the youngest ones. Uh, the sky's the limit for him, but Ethan Page is, is, is so talented at what he does. And oh, yeah. Like I told you, TJP and, and 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 the machine guns are coming back like they like they never left and 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 hanging with these guys. It's just amazing. That's yeah. unreal. It's it, wild. It's, it is such a talented young roster. And yeah, Ace, we're we're big fans of Ace here. We talk mm -hmm. about him quite a bit and how he just has it, you know and. He's got he's he's the future of that company in so many ways and uh that's amazing that's a great little story though we uh, thanks for sharing that that's really cool that's really cool very cool uh, let's see we got a couple other ones here uh, D back Cub eighty five is asking what is the biggest moment uh, of your announcing career so far do you have a one that sticks out that you put a uh, that goes uh in a frame in a frame on the mantle at all. <clears throat> um not really probably the first nitro I guess. Um, mm. but, uh, but yeah, not really. Um, you, you got to remember a lot of the big shows that I did were, uh, Buffer did the main event, which is totally cool. I had no problem with it. People always ask me, but, um, but so, you know, so it wasn't like I, you know, like I have, you know, that me in the ring with, uh, Sting introducing Sting and Hogan at Starcade, you know, I wasn't the guy doing that. So, um, I guess the first Nitro, um, you know, Slammiversary was very special to me in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, so, you know, just to be able to be back and be a part of that excitement and, and, and you know, see the people get excited in, in the crazy business in the middle of a crazy virus. So, uh, 
So yeah, I, I, I hate to dodge the question, but I really don't have one specific moment. Of it. Oh, totally, totally understandable. Uh, one of our good friends of the show, Mark's asking, do you see explosion as a vehicle for growth for the company or simply right now? Is it just licensing rights overseas at this point? Is it just a syndication or you, are they really putting some focus on them? You're a part of, you are a part of uh, explosion right now and it, with around the ring. Do you see it growing? Is, is the company kind of investing in it a bit more? I think that there's a, a, a little bit of a youth movement on explosion. Um, uh, I know that some guys that have been highly touted on the Indies came in at the last taping. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, um, Alex Shelley, if he didn't organize it, he at least was tweeting about it. Um, so, so, you know, it, we, we, we have very, like I said, you know, we, we, we do these tapings and, and we start at 11 o'clock, we'll finish till 11 o'clock at night and, and, you know, we're doing promos and pre-tapes and digital and, and, and overseas and, and, and impact. So, I mean, obviously, you know, we're just, we're, we're trying to do as best we can and, and, you know, in the circumstances that we're under with no crowd, of course. And, um, and so I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a priority because, you know, the priority is put on the, a great two hours impact every every Tuesday, but um, but I I, I, I think that few, I, I I don't think it's a throwaway either. I think they'd love to do something with it, and I think you're going to start seeing some more young indie talent, and um, and and uh, some of those, some of those guys did really well. There's one guy who stood out specifically. I don't remember his name. He's a uh, an English kid. Um, ben Carter specifically, but um. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. He he actually wrestled um, Chris Sabin, and they had a oh. heck of a match, man, unbelievable match. Um, yeah. So spoiler alert on that. But uh, <laughs> I forget his name off the top of my head, but you'll see it. You'll know when you see it. But um, but yeah, uh, like I said, you know, it's, I I don't know that it's a priority, but I think it's something that if somebody wanted to run with it, uh, like an Alex Shelley and a Chris Sabin, you know, I I think that they would give him full reign to run with it because. Um, you know, there's, there's so much on, on, on everybody's plate already, uh, you know. So I, I don't know. That's sort of a black hole question. It's not as – I don't want to say that it, nobody cares about impact, or, or about explosion, because they do. But I also don't want to say, you know, it's, it's it, that, that's a main focus right now because, or, you know, there's others that are the main focus, and that's not an afterthought, but kind of the second focus. And, and we hope it uh, it get, does keep you know continuing to grow because like I said we're big fans of it here we do a we do a whole show just talking explosions so we want it. we're we're big fans of seeing what and you know, what a vehicle that can be for like the youth movement like you mentioned you know bringing new talent in featuring segments like yours and and other ones that they can probably introduce there so we we're fully behind it so we would love and a lot of our listeners here who you know who do the watch long and stuff with us they they love watching. Like we've tried to we try to create a lot of buzz for explosion because of that. So we're excited to see it. We're excited to see that that coming up. We heard about those indie guys uh, coming in, and we're excited to see what what comes of that. And if that really stirs up even more traffic to explosion, then you know all the better for everybody. No doubt. Oh. I'm here. Yeah. Oh, Dave, we got a little muffled there. We uh, we cut out just for a second. If you want to repeat that, sorry. That, is that, is, can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yep, there you go. go. Hello? Yep, you're good. I said Saban and Shelly, Saban and Shelly uh, if they want to get more involved and they seem that they're interested, uh, you know, they've known Scott the more for 20, 25 years now. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Scotty would give them the ball and tell them to run with it. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get back in front of a live crowd. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Would love well, I guess, well, well, what, 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 David, what's your thought? Uh, because we know, like, obviously there are some companies starting to do a little bit with live crowds. Would you, would, what would be your kind of idea? Just like, even not even saying from an impact perspective, but just, I guess you personally from being in the business so long for a TV product, would you like to see something where it is like a limited crowd as opposed to an empty, or if you can't have a decent sized crowd prefer it being empty? And any thoughts on that? I, I can't speak for anybody in management, but I think that mm -hmm. it's going to be a slow build. You know, I, I don't think we're going to come back and put 800 people into a packed uh, Melrose ballroom or wherever uh, they play. Um, but, uh, but uh, 
I think that uh, it's going to be, you know, like these indie shows that are going on. Uh, Warrior Wrestling, Warriors of Wrestling comes to mind and some of the other ones where, you you know, maybe uh, I, I don't even know what that looks like for Impact. Um, we can't, you know, I, I, obviously we can't do the the, uh, the screen like WWE does, and I don't even know that I like that. It was different. Yeah, it was better than nothing, but I don't even know if I'm a fan of that. Um, and and people say, why don't you do what what um what uh, AEW does with the uh, with the the talent? Like, I don't know the answer to that specifically, but my best guess is that, well, I, like I just said, all day while we're taping these matches, we're doing this, all these backstage interviews. It would be an absolute and and vignettes and all this stuff it would be a nightmare to have talent out there that wasn't on the show, but then they needed them for a promo. And you know, we have a very small roster and even smaller crew. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's the specific reason, but it would literally be a logistical nightmare to do that. So we're just going to roll with what we're doing and hope people dig it until we can get some people back in. Yeah, well, yeah, we dig it. We dig it for I sure. I dig it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I think you guys pull it off so well with the way the production has done the, the arena with the lights and the way they're shooting it so tight and the camera angles. You're not even focused on there not being a crowd. The, the Not only are the performers all even brushing up some of their – some of their chops, like just, you know, being able to pull off almost like a theatrical stage performance in a sense. But it's like, we're not even thinking about it. We're just so focused on the in, on what's going on in the ring now because of that, that it's awesome. I'm not even like the whole crowd thing's not even, it, it's like become an afterthought at this point because the, yeah. the in ring is so good quality. If there's a positive to it, uh, it's that people have really had to concentrate on their character, learn their character yes. inside out. Because they can't rely on the fans to to get them through it, they have to be themselves. Because there ain't nobody cheering them on, booing them on. Uh, so, so I think you know. I talked to D'Lo and Tommy Dreamer and, and some of the guy, producers about this, and and we say you know if there's a if there's a positive to this craziness as far as impact goes in the wrestling business, maybe as a whole, it's really forced these people to learn their character and how to play their character. And so I'm hoping that that translates even even into better reactions when we are able to go back in front of fans. I, I, I totally agree. I, I feel everybody's promos have gotten stronger. People's performances just to feed off their opponents in the ring has gotten better. It's it's the it's such a a, 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 a to roundabout like positive that's come of it is that mm -hmm. like you said, you don't have a crowd to kind of hide that in or play or worry about playing off of. You got to play off of yourself and your opponent. And I just I mean yeah. <laughs> It's great. I, the one that comes to mind, like today, we're going to talk about when we get into our review <laughs> later uh, after you after you uh, take off, David. Alicia Edwards today, yeah, cut I was a just promo. Say that she cut a promo today that was her the the best promo she has done ever in her whole impact. Right? I, I I will. I was like I was blown away. I was like she has never been that confident and that strong in her mic skills. And today you just saw it, it all hit, and I was like, this is a result of just having that focus time and it's stuff like that. And everybody's getting that. And you're going to come away with an amazing roster. Come back to crowds. You're going to have people who are who have improved tenfold at this point. It's going it's going to be fantastic. It seems like she found herself at Wrestle House. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, able to play off of that, was was able to play off the confidence that that gave her in doing that promo tonight. And yeah, I, I agree. Fantastic job. David, I, think, any, I think so many did. Yeah, so many. Yes. Did. Any truth to the rumor, yeah, I mean, Dave, that you'll be you'll be on Wrestle House too? Like, can we put that one to bed? Uh, will you be at Wrestle House too? Break the exclusive uh, right here. I Dave. can't confirm or deny, but I will say if I am, I'm hiding my booze from Crazy Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, David, listen, we've kept you for an hour. We truly appreciate it. We it was so kind of you to, to give us your time. I know it's a little later for you then, so we appreciate you hanging out with us, uh, especially post show impact. Uh, if you want to be a, please definitely plug where can people connect with you, the podcast, you know, like I will, we're also going to include all those details in the description of the show, everybody. So if you guys miss it, I'll have it in the text, but David will say it for the audio listeners. David, please go ahead and tell us where people can connect with you. Did we, oh, did we lose him? Hello? Yeah, there you oh, are. There you. Yep. There he is. Hello, hello. Yeah, you're there, David. We can well, hear first, you. First of all, I want to apologize to everybody for, First of all, I want to apologize to everybody for the connection problem. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's this new platform that you guys use, but um, but I have to figure this out because uh, I'd love to come back and chat with you guys. Um, 
second of all, you can follow me at David Penzer, at David Penzer on Twitter, sitting ringside, where all podcasts are found. Uh, give it a listen, and if you like it, please subscribe. And um, just watch Impact every uh, Tuesday night on Access TV, 8 o'clock, build up for Bound for Glory. And uh, I think it's going to be a great show. And um, thank you guys for caring. Uh, you know, without without you guys, there is no impact and there's there's no me back in the wrestling business. So thank you guys for caring and thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, David. And thank you. Yeah, thank keep you. it up on on, on sitting rings. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. It's a great show. Uh, absolutely love several of the episodes. My favorite recent one, David, I got to say, I love the – the crowbar and the Mark Madden one was fantastic, by the way. So if you can get Madden on for a part two, I will definitely not scoff at that. That was great. Have you listened to Jay Lethal? I have not. The Jay Lethal one's the most recent one, isn't it? I have not. Or the, uh, the one before the most recent one. I have not gotten to that one yet. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think of that. That was one of my favorite ever. Okay, great. Definitely. Guys, sitting ringside with David Penzer. David. The voice of Impact Wrestling, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate Thank it. You, David, David Penz, everybody. Thank you very much, David. We will Thanks talk to you soon. Thank you. You got Take it. Care. Thanks, Take David. care, David. Bye bye. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff, everybody. Look. Nice. David Penzer. How about that, huh? Wow. That's cool. Very that nice. Was, that was unique. That was unique. I was really looking forward to that. I knew yeah. it was going to be different because it's not one of those. Uh, you know that that I hate to say typical wrestling interviews. We try to not be typical and and, and keep it unique, but uh, I knew David was going to be uh, uh, unique just because he's he's not an in ring guy. He's yes. he's certainly a very important part of the company, but he's a part of the company that doesn't get put a lot of focus on. So yeah, that was nice. That's Definitely. what we're all about here. Yeah. Whether it's like T and I, we 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 don't do things the normal way and. We do the same thing. We bring on the guests that are a little bit different, but it's a guy that obviously the, the the voice is as we've all said, but also obviously like he's doing stuff backstage. He's yeah, he, and obviously he's been in the business a long time, a lot of experience, and uh, I think obviously he's seen the same things we're seeing because uh, I know me and Trent come from a lot of the similar places with WCW, TNA, yeah. early TNA, and like uh, I think we all see it with Ace Austin, and it's it's just one of those things like we kind of keep hearing it from a lot of the like you just know and we were watching it the other day me and when me and Jabin were watching it's like there's no like he he's there's no way he's not the face of the company in, in one we, year two years we talk max. about all the time like alicia was putting yeah. ace austin or like day one basically like we've been ace austin fans for a long time in the yeah. show from when i was at united we stand and it was like okay star yeah, when he jumped Since off the top before, of that, then. yeah. Well, you know, but be, an impact star, yeah, an impact star, right, right. <laughs> Wait, Alicia, did you I go? Just, to, did you go to the United We Stand too? Were you there? Because that was Jersey. I was right? there. Yeah. yeah, that was during WrestleMania weekend, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's was when I was that. running all over the boroughs, and it's like I'm like Ross, Ross, I'm I'm coming, I'm coming, I'll be there. Make sure my seat's there. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the the two shows I went to during WrestleMania weekend. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was crazy in like book 12 shows. <laughs> oh, that's insane. No, I did that in the doomed Black, Cla Black Craft Wrestling um, <laughs> show, which was terrible. I was outside the venue uh, because we, we thought we were going to get in. Um, like at the <laughs> that not had it. Did it? Did it fail? Oh no, the show it? happened. Oh, it uh, happened. But, but the, the ticket, the tickets fell through, so oh, we, we did not go. But then, like thirty minutes into it, people were contacting us that we knew inside, and they're like, "You Shit are show. so lucky you are not here." <laughs> what? Are you like, serious? It, 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 it's like considered one of the worst. Like I know how we talk about Talking Shop Mania, worst pay per view ever. Well, that's like this tongue in cheek. Or... Actually, the worst show ever. Are you? It serious? was just. It was well, like watching delays and it just, it was, it was, oh, it was hard. actually, I'd say it was like watching a wrestling show and fast forward times a hundred because some of the matches were seconds long. Yeah. Are some of them were. Yeah. Cause they, they seconds. started late. They, oh, it was, it was a mess. It was Boy, a mess. They had a lot of hype coming in and they had all these they all the wearing their shit. Well, they, had some, like, they had some good shows before that. It okay. just totally pretty much the company went out of business because of that WrestleMania show. Mm. 
Oh, Critical Sting saying they haven't had a show since. He's saying it was a, it was the equivalent of a steaming pile of diarrhea. <laughs> wow, holy crap! Oh, it, you're not wrong. I did not hear about this, guys. That's crazy. It's, but um, all right, well, so, so, so basically, I do, some people at the show spend too much time at Wrestle House around Susie. Yes, yeah. they, 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 they got, got the rugs. They got oh, the we, rugs, Jay. We did get to see a 15 minutes worth of someone getting crucified, though. So there yes, was that. That was one of the <laughs> angles. <laughs> That's where oh they spent a lot of time on. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? All right, let's get into it, guys. September 8th, 2020, Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Now, thank you again to David Panzer for an, a yes. whole hour. What a, what a legend. That was man. great. That was, that was so cool. I mean, how I, cool. Like, yeah, I can just let him talk. Like, it's just, it's freaking David Penzer. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> so, no, that was very nice of him to, to join us for an hour. So, we appreciate that, David. Thank you very much for joining us. But let's jump in, guys. This was a. Uh, this episode felt like it just went so fast to me today. Like, I feel like I didn't get to, like, I turned it on and it just, it had such a good quick flow that I was like, man, yeah, it, was, it was quick. <laughs> it was quick. Well, there, there was the stuff that you ex expected that they advertised, but then you got some surprises too. And so it, it all just was like, oh, wow. It just, uh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Def, it, it, was, it was, it was a good episode, man. It really, uh, had a great flow. And I was like, man, it's just, it's a bummer to head to end because it was just, it, I was having, it went oh, by really fast. Like I was did. enjoying it, and then before I knew it, it was over. Yeah, I just it feel like it just flew by. So let's jump into it, guys. We opened up with the new world champion Eric Young came out to uh, basically psychotic as shit. Like he just <laughs> he looks tapped, guys. I gotta say, Eric Young is just looking like he's out of his mind. Total lunatic, uh, world class maniac. Right? He goes down the list: uh, world class man, athlete, professional wrestler, maniac. Um, but I was okay. Now we talked about this for a second at the end of with, with David. Alicia Edwards comes out. Yes. This was fucking fantastic. Um, now I've we've said it, I've said it that like I've always said if she just relaxes and 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 just delivers her lines like she would talk, it would come off so awesome. Cause she she you can always tell before she always had that like I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to say, kind of choppiness to it, right? Today totally kicked some ass. She was fucking on fire defending her husband, talking, just talking him down. He's trying to get a word and she's fucking dressing him back. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, man. I was like, what happened to Alicia Edwards? I totally 100 percent Wrestle House. This has to be because of Wrestle House. Uh killing it though. Uh, but she basically said Eddie's gonna whoop your ass, reclaim his title. And then I love I had a feeling Eric was gonna do this, gonna totally remind me. There was a movie with Kiefer Sutherland called, I think it was An Eye for an Eye. Do you guys remember this? There was a movie where Kiefer Sutherland like like attacks him like some I think she was a deaf girl or, or a mute or something, and like her mom like tried to get revenge and try to kill Kiefer Sutherland, and then he just was like, I don't care. And and Eric Young literally pulled that same line out today. Alicia, sorry. Alicia, okay, my bad. Alicia Edwards. My bad. Jesus. Jesus. Alicia Edwards. Um, I usually get that right. Because sorry, I'm a little hyped up from Penzer. Give me a person. It's okay. You're going to pass. I'll just call her Lish. How about that? I'll call her Lish like Eddie does. But I just love, he looked at her. He's like, I don't care. And she just slaps the shit what? out of him. <laughs> That's balls. That's Boston balls right there. It was. She's got the balls. The <laughs> balls. The testicular fortitude. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed him though. Um, and he. But I love this. Young was kind of like, all right, fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he's about to leave. Like, cool, you got me. And then he just comes back, grabs her, about to pile driver, Tommy <laughs> runs. Which I love. Tommy runs down, makes the save, uh, defends her. Tommy cuts a fire promo right here. Like, this is my oh, family. Yeah. Who do you think you are? You know, like things were. Tommy fine. always <laughs> cuts good promos. Like, it, it, what yeah. I love about it, it means something. His promos, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's might, passion. There's passion. Like he might, people might scoff. Like, oh, Tommy Dreamer having a match again. Like, what the fuck, you know? But. You can't deny it, man. When he cuts a promo, it's like, I believe what he's telling me. I'm in. Yeah. I'm just when, hooked on it. When you've got the people like Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, and the list goes on and on, and then you got Tommy standing behind this tight-knit crew that's on top of the company, Tommy's the glue. 
Yeah. Okay. Tommy's the glue. And I got to add something about Alyssa Edwards here. Alyssa has gone through so much. And she put a little bit of it in the promo too, which is beautiful. She's gone through so much with her husband. Ups and downs. The craziness. She mentioned the, the baseball bat with Sammy even. Yes. This promo was a perfect culmination of all the BS that she's gone through with her husband, the ups and downs, <clears throat> everything. And, and because, I mean, this, this, this is like, you could say this is almost like the climax right here because Eddie finally got the championship at Slammiversary. And all of a sudden it's all taken away so fast. It's like these, these, these uh, open, the uh, open challenges. It's like, it's like, they didn't even happen. Like they didn't even exist. It's already gone. Yeah. And 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 so so she's she's upset for her husband and you know and for herself too. You know she's she's feeling it too. So this promo was beautiful. You know because just like everything came to a head and she just let Eric have it and it's just man yeah just we we we've got to give her those props because it was beautiful. I think I think Russell House absolutely was a part of it, but she's done so much growing bit by bit over the last few years. Absolutely, and and um, yeah, it was great. No, she. Well, she that is a- why she <laughs> got a blue check mark because that is uh, we did not do J Bo news yet. We need some J Bo news. That's right. We just skip. We kind of jump right in. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. We'll do it at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's coming to news. There was a bunch more check marks today. Was there more? Was there more today? Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. J Bone, do you actually have any news today that I skipped over? <laughs> um, I, I got I got a couple unique. I mean, I can I, not too many people watch the uh, the Impact Weekly compared to this one, so we could throw a couple things there. But I had a uh, one interesting piece of news that's tied to a uh, tie of Valkyrie that I heard in an interview. If people are interested, so. we'll do it, we'll yeah. do it at the end. We'll wrap up with it before that's we go. Fine. We'll, go, we'll wrap up. Uh, sorry, my bad. My, I have, I apologize, and uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know whether to say congratulations or I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> well, well, maybe, maybe you were also taking calls from Johnny Bravo about uh, the wedding plans, like I did during I, the post stream. I gave him a. Uh, oh, I gave. I gave John a a uh, a little clue that I as soon as I heard elephants and ice sculptures, I wanted an, an invite to this wedding. So <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to being there for that one. Hey, it, you know, I, I got I got nothing to be upset about. I accidentally put some, uh, you know, smash this podcast content on the on the the TNI Twitch, you know, the other night. So uh, hey, yeah. you know, I I can't complain. What the <laughs> hell? Last night I'm sitting around, you know, trying to, trying to watch Fuller House. I'm almost done with Fuller House, by the way. I'm trying to watch Fuller House, and I get the notification on my phone <laughs> that Total Nonstop Impact is on live now on Twitch, talking raw, and I go, what the fuck? And I go, what the fuck is this? And I like mess. I'm like, you're on the wrong fucking stream. What the hell? He's like, oh shit, my bad. And I, and, I tune, and I tune into his show, and he's like, Trent's pissed off. He's live on YouTube, going, man, sorry, Trent. I know you're pissed. Right now. I, was like, I was like, delete that shit off our channel right now, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I thought I was bugging yeah, out when I got it, the it, notification for it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Although sometimes what? it does get a little glitchy, Twitch, with that. Like, it's like, why am I getting a notification mm-hmm. and then nothing's there? But then when that happened, they're like. Because because me and Kyle happened to be in the other room watching the uh, the impact for the, the, the show we wanted the hit and run show so that's how early we were prepping this show this was like at ten o'clock wow <laughs> the show went on like four and a half hours later uh, oh god but, uh, but one of the reasons why there was another invasion was it's like what what's Shea Bone doing what's he doing that was <laughs> then like, all what? of a sudden he was in the crosshairs. Oh and then, yeah, and then yeah, they they uh, like Bill came in for a brief second. It was like, oh, Bill's here, yeah. And then and then Kyle and Bill came in, and I'm like, well, oh yeah, well, welcome to the Raw review, yeah. <laughs> welcome to Raw review on Total Nonstop Impact, and then everybody. Collectively- By then it was moved. By then it was on Smash. It was well, in Smash at that point. Collectively, everybody yeah. just went to J Boat and went. Uh- Jiminy Christmas. Right back yeah. at you. Yeah. That, was, that, that was the whole review right there because I and I I had the wrong background in the background. I had the all out thing back there still. It, it was a complete train wreck. I, I had a <laughs> well, I think I think uh, critical thing. He he got it right here. Yeah, what do you say? Just the wrong channel. Then Bill and 
Kyle and Bill ran in, so I decided to have a stream five hours later. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll call, at the end of the show, I'll talk about you two lunatics at four in the morning last night with this whole thing. Unreal, unreal. All right, we get a clue. We get a little drop from uh, Madison that Moose is on his way to get some answers for uh, from EC3. He's on. He's going to the airport. He's on his way. We're gonna see what's going on. He's getting out of plane. We don't know to where. He's on a hunt yeah. for EC3. He's getting on that Southwest. He's he's getting those miles. That was Southwest. That was that Southwest. Was Southwest. But we do get the uh, we do get the clip of him going to the airport wearing some very very interesting shorts. Those shorts, what the <laughs> fuck, what the hell was up with those shorts, man? Yeah, <laughs> he's a like, fashion plate. He is he a is, fashion plate. He is. I um, mean, he's, he's, he's <laughs> buying names of shorts that we've probably never heard of before. You know, like some 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 French thing. You know, that sounds like a dessert, but no, it's a brand of shorts. Oh, all right. A very responsible moose had his mask on, you know, he has travel bags. Moose wears rompers, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does wear rompers. Yeah. That's right. So that that explains <laughs> the patterns. Wait, is He's that a, where he, is that where the brokini came from? What the, is the, a brokini? Javen, pull that picture of Oh man. <laughs> That's not oh no, I don't have any no, pictures. You talking show. about the mankini? You talking the Borat? Oh, in the the hammock, the, 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 the banana old, hammock, the pulled over banana hammock, no, I, I, like, the it, supreme it, wedgie. This, this is something that literally just came out. It, it looks like the Borat thing, except it's got a thicker, thicker shoulder strap. Like like Andre the Giant. I have seen that penis. Yeah, not Andre's penis, dear lord. No. Holy crap, that's like a third leg. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Take out a whole room. Anyway, um, but no, it, it's like it's like an Andre thing, only a, a lot less uh, material. Uh, I, I have not seen this thing, but uh, I'll, 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 I'll I'll look it up. I'll look it up and I'll, we'll share it. Yikes! Show and tell. Yeah, show and tell, Dave. <laughs> show and tell. Show and tell. I, I have not. I just just so you know, just you know, if there's any ladies in the audience, I have not bought one, nor do I plan to. Not to disappoint you. I'm just. You know. Oh no, Mrs. J Bone hasn't held your feet to the fire in regards to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's enough about this. Because you want to know the conversation that I want to have right now. Exactly. We get back right on, now. On, the show. back on track. <laughs> Um, well, Kyle's not here, so I'm trying to help. Well, well, well since right. Kyle's not here, Trent, did, did you see? You watched the show yesterday, right? I watched. Yeah, I didn't finish. I watched about half of it. It was so late. Saw- got- Welcome back, everybody, to Total Outside Impact. Impact Talk for Impact Fans. I'm your host, the looks on my go is Jim Out. Jim Out. What a fucking asshole. What an asshole. I can't. I, I saw that. Why? Oh, my God. Pulling off a letter, pulling the Letterman thing, huh? Is that what he's doing? He's going what with the Letterman trick. gimmick. Classic. Jesus. It's classic. Jesus I love it. Christ. Uh, all right, Bill, I'm going to leave you in charge. Keep some of those comments coming too while people are just playing. Oh, Good no. Lord. Good Lord Almighty. Why are we doing uh, this? Okay, so this hurt because it's kind of like saying, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. And that's so much worse. Well, well we're staying on track. <laughs> We're trying to have a good time over here. I'm giving up on you guys. Okay. It, it's it's incredible. We shout Ingrid out. We 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 point her out. You, you give her a, you give her her own special hello placard at the beginning of the show, and we're still getting dog for this. Mark's too stoned for this. He's saying, "What the hell's going on in the show today?" Penzer was here. It's a fucking wild. Anybody else want to jump in? Just have, just have somebody jump in and <laughs> randomly just jump in and so we got them. more shit to say. Yeah, who else has some more shit to pile onto this right now? Come oh, on. dear lord. I'm, I'm on the third segment only, guys. <laughs> give it time. Oh my goodness. All right. Taya, Taya John and Rosemary are backstage talking uh, talking wedding. Uh Rosemary wants to make sure that Valk- the Valkyrie is okay. You know, that, that Bravo ass. She's like, she's all for it. You know, she's basically taken over. She's become a bridezilla and she's not even the bride. She's like, but I am a bride, so I know how this works. And uh, she goes, this is going to be the wedding of the century. I'm going to take care of it. It'll be under control. I have it. It's all it's all handled. I'll, I'll take Jeez. care of it. Um, Rosemary did allude to there's only one person who can officiate this wedding, though. And she goes, it's kind of hard to bring them back from the dead. Why do Oof. we? Who do we think this is now? Who do we Oof. think this could be? Who do we think this could be? Well, Any guess? There's only one. Who booked this shit? Who, yeah. is, is, Jim Mitchell, is he coming back? I is think he, she's gonna try to resurrect him, man. She's uh, gonna. I, I think this could be it. It's, it's she's gonna get a seance going, maybe. Are we gonna get heavenly 
Mitchell. We might get heavenly Mitchell. Because right? we got to remember, he went to heaven. He did. Because he was like, book this shit. He's like, where the hell am I? True. We're going to get good Who guys. Who booked this there's shit? A, there's <laughs> cats up there. We'll get the good angel, Mitchell. Um, so she All did right. say. Oh, this, this oh is, wow. It is so, yeah. Nice. What would you wear Whoa. that with? What? Or. I I don't know, but this is this is the 2020 mankini. This I I do love that you also sent <laughs> to our too, just so we also have a double shot of this bit. Thank you, Jamal. It's the only way I could do it because when I, the, the old way I was trying to do it wasn't working. But I knew if I put it in the chat and then clicked on it, boom! There you go. You're welcome. It's been a bangarama. That picture sure has. My goodness. Uh, <laughs> but um, no. So so. Jim Mitchell, right? This is going to be fun. So now she's leaving all the planning to John, but basically Ty is going to plan the whole thing out. So this should be fun because Ty is Brian Phil. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm, I'm eager to see where this goes. And I love that this is kind of like it's not quite Russell House, but it's kind of it, it's like Russell House Extended Edition now because it's playing off of what happened in Russell House. So it's kind of a little extra Russell house material. Uh, all right, number one contender match, Chris Bay, TJP. Uh, Rohit said, if you two fight, the winner gets a shot. So this, is, this is the one he set up for the um, – basically, he set this one up for the execution title shot. Uh, great, great match. These two look fantastic. Rohit comes out looking like a champ, by the way, looking like a star. Man, just, just decked out. The belt was extra shiny. The shirt was extra shiny. <laughs> just, just mocking the two from the ringside. It was great. Uh, I loved it. Uh, let me start with you, Bill, on this one. How did you, what did you think of this one? Thoughts on TJP wins. It's a good win on this one. They, they continue the, the kind of not the down, I'll say the decline of Bay, but almost like the he's kind of coming apart because he's not getting his momentum back and he's kind of losing a little bit. I think he's playing the yeah. Or yeah, well, he's getting under his skin, or he's getting under his skin uh, a lot. <laughs> And I think what we're really seeing here, and I know Penzer even mentioned it too, like because TJP is one of those guys that are really standing out. When we saw that match, the uh, the handicap match, pretty much where where he won the title, uh, it was just like TJP was really he was the star of that match, and uh, he continued it like he he looked great in this match again. Like TJP, like I hate to say it, but like they're gonna have to find something else for Fala because TJP needs to just be split back out as a singles exhibition guy now. Yeah, he, 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 um, he is. Everyone, oh, I gotta address them before I. Everybody say I'm in the kitchen. I told you guys, my kitchen. <laughs> I have one of those breakfast nook things right here. I'm hitting it. That's what I'm hitting. Yeah. The water on the nook. I have a Brita filter <laughs> sitting right here. I'm letting you is guys. Some, see I'm breaking the fourth wall here. <laughs> is someone vacuuming? Nobody's vacuuming. Nobody's. Vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah, home. it's like we hear we hear a vacuum in someone's background. If somebody's vacuuming in my house, there's a there, this place is haunted. I'm definitely not vacuuming. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, no, TJP, it's it's crazy. Like, I Blue never associated him with being such like a technical guy because he's always like sold as like the X Division guy, high flyer, but he's like a total technical wrestler. Yeah. And I fucking love that. I'm like, holy shit. He's always like, there's like, there's like no less than six submission moves per match now, which I love. Right, Alicia? Like, he's. He's like he's a, we always think there's an X division high flyer, but he can like he can ground game with the best of them, I think. Oh yeah. Jay, um <laughs> you were excited about this one during the watch long. You loved uh seeing the TJP go at all these submissions though. I, I tell you what, honestly, look, I love the match. I, I don't want to take anything away from the match, but when Rohit came down and wouldn't shut his mouth and was like he kept distracting TJP and Bay. I, I was cracking up. I was like, man. I'm like, look at this guy with the title now. He is just exploding with charisma. Now, not that he oh, wasn't yeah. before. Not that he wasn't before. I don't want to, you know. Uh, but, but man, Rohit was out there. He was, uh, I think he borrowed something out of uh, Bravo's closet, too. Oh, it looked like a Bravo shirt. It totally did. It totally yeah. did. Yeah, it's he obviously borrowed something out of Bravo's closet. So he he might be helping with wedding plans. Don't don't be surprised if we don't <laughs> see if uh, Rohit becomes a part time wedding planner and all this because uh, I don't think he, the whole uh, Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steele thing ain't going to be working for Bravo. Um, 
Ah, oh, too bad. Too bad. <laughs> Cause we scared nobody. Nobody. If any one of them wanted to run up right now, we you know what I would do? <laughs> <laughs> scare nobody. 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 Go ahead. But yeah, he's he's out there and he's uh he's he's just talking to both. I'm like, yeah, 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 keep yeah, yeah, and just just flapping his gums and showing off the title, and they keep glancing over their shoulder at him like. Can we help you? We are trying to have a match. You know, it was, it was hilarious. <laughs> and, and, about him. He's such a shit stir, though. Like, now Bay's, he's got that. that. Bay's expression at the end of the match, like, what happened? You know, <laughs> what happened? It's great. And, and that, he's had that expression a few times. I think, I think Basil even got a great picture of when Rohit beat him for the yes. title. And yes. he's all brand. You see Bay in the background, like, what? Rohit. <laughs> <laughs> He's always that's like, what I was saying. If now that like we're getting very close to a new emote on uh, Twitch, um, that it, we were talking about some faces and Bay came up as one of the possibilities. I'm like, it couldn't be like cool Chris Bay with the sunglasses. It had to be like eyes bugged out, angry Chris Bay face. <laughs> it's, it's better, better facial expression. You know that that said, l- let's put that out there right now. Uh, we we are almost on the, the next emote for Twitch. Uh, vote. Who do you guys want as the next email? Currently, we got Tanae and uh, Johnny Swinger. So if somebody can in, in, on Twitch right now, go ahead and please display those if you're a Twitch subscriber. But uh, third emote's coming up. We're almost at that tier. So who do you guys want? Who do you guys want uh, to be the third emote? Just put that out there. Susie. Susie will be good. There is no yeah. even a Susie one, right? They have a Rosemary mm-hmm. one. Susie. Ooh, we do need a knockout. That'd be good, I think. Just a Susie like waving. Yeah, Susie or Kylie? Just so Susie with a blank face, like, or <laughs> Kylie with a. I would, like that. <laughs> I would definitely like a Susie one. Okay, I, I'm I'm voting Susie. I'm with that. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. But you guys, yeah, definitely anybody anybody on Twitch, go ahead and please uh, cast your vote. Let us know who you want. Uh, all right. Now we go to we go over. To, so TJP wins. New. He's a new champ. Uh, new uh, number one contender, and he was. He was just kind of doing the whole, like, I see you. I got my eyes on you to Rohit as they, they went off. So that's going to be fun. When that happens, I don't know. I'd like to see Rohit get a nice little run, get some good defenses under his, under his belt a little bit, so to speak. So not sure when that, that's going to take place. Maybe, you know, I'd like to build it to Bound for Glory. Maybe not rush this one because this could be fun. Maybe Rohit keeps screwing TJ out of a shot and keeps p- pushing it back, whatever it might be. Hey, you, you know what might be fun as, mm. uh, as an emote? Maybe yeah. Jiminy Christmas. Eventually, we'll get to. <laughs> I think it'd be great. Actually, that, that face right there would be fantastic. Just a J Bone mullet. Just, just the mullet and the face. Just the mullet and the face. J Bone 1989. That would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right, we get to see uh, Madison Ray and Johnny Swinger in locker room talk. So Swinger's back on locker room talk. He is He's back. back. Yeah, He's daddy. back, daddy. He is He's back. back. You guys swing. Totally back in uh, locker room talk, which by the way has a ton of merchandise, guys. Locker room talk is full of merch. There's like there's um there's a ton of locker room talk t-shirts on shopping. Yeah, any color you want. Yeah, seriously, like any color you can think of is there's locker room talk logo. So grab <laughs> but uh guess this week, speaking of Kylie and Susie, are Kylie and Susie. And uh Madison wants to know if um if Kylie went to Wrestle House to dodge. Uh, dodge a title shot, you know that she or or should we say spoil a title title shot or Donna Donna Peraza's black tie for a moment? And Ray says absolutely not. I, I didn't I didn't go to Dodge. No, I, I you know I didn't I didn't and I didn't come to spoil either. I didn't I didn't do any of that stuff. And then uh, Madison asks her, has she ever met uh, Sue, or did you just know her as Susie? And um, as soon as she asked, that she couldn't really answer. But then Deanna and Kimber Kimberly crashed the party. They challenge. Kylie and Susie to a tag match next week. So a little scuffle, a little kerfuffle. Great word. Nobody used the word kerfuffle anymore. A little bit of a kerfuffle. Uh, Actually, Chris Jericho's used it lately. You know, I didn't, you know, cut his mic though, please. (laughs) You have admin control. I do have access. I can't cut mics now. You can. (laughs) When I say it, I need you to cut his mic, please. (laughs) What an impact wrestling. Okay. There you go. He cut, he actually cut his mic. (laughs) Phil, worst guy ever to actually. (laughs) 
beautiful. I got his mic when he wasn't talking. I <laughs> got both your mics. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So in regards to Kimber and Diona, um, uh, what an interesting pair. And I feel like they really complement each other. Like, I didn't, I didn't really see it. In at first, when they started to seemingly be putting them together, but now that it seems like they're more of an established team, they really, uh, they really mesh well. And it's great for Kim, yeah. right? Like immediately, she's running with the champ. Yeah, she's still kind of new, right? Oh, but it's yeah. like, boom, she's right there alongside the champ. Oh, I, she's gonna snipe her though. I, I feel like she is. I feel like she totally is. In totally. good time, she is. She likes to play mind games friends close and your enemies closer you know what i mean like that's that's kind of right there you know she's got the belt she wants that title she's like the crown jewel baby she's the crown jewel i do like i think kimber's uh impact run has been great so far it's slow mm -hmm. build. she's had good matches she's looked good she's got some badass theme music which by the way whoopsie found friend of the show whoopsie found her theme music oh the actual band that does it. he sent it to me the other day on, on oh cool it's so cool. It's like it's like this all it's like this comp it's on a compilation album of like all female fronted bands. Nice. Fucking awesome. I'll I'll share it out wow. with everybody on, on our Twitter. But Whoopsie did find it. Thank you to Whoopsie for uh Thank you. Yeah, for digging that up. I really I like her music. Yes, it is really cool. I I'm Very a big cool. fan of it. They totally and and uh, speaking of uh these two, the crown jewel and uh Diana, uh could be part of the J Bo news, but I'll I'll say it here. Uh but it was announced today that both Deanna and Kimber will be appearing at the collective in Indiana as part yes. of the Shimmer Show. Yeah. So, okay, yep. So they'll be in Indiana, and I will be cheering them on front row. Oh, that's cool. You're going. I'm jealous. Are you doing all three days, Bill? I'm doing, yes, all 12 shows. Holy shit. <laughs> Go to the brunch. I'll be at the ball, ball, the, the I'll be at the show that's called the brunch, but I don't know if there's actually a brunch there. Maybe I'll have a uh, I'll eat something. While it's going there you go. <laughs> that's Indianapolis, correct? Yes. Yeah, I saw that. Shimmer is back. Uh, friend of mine, Dave Prazak, the head of Shimmer, was talking about it's going to be limited capacity. So if you got your tickets, that's great because they're running only like twenty five percent capacity. Yeah, twenty five percent is what they're what they're, they're do, doing. They're It'll you. sell out quick. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Uh if you guys have never been to a shimmer show, if you um if uh, if you're fan, fans of women uh, women's wrestling, it is the showcase of women's wrestling. That's where every major name uh, knockouts and other women's divisions have, has come from Shimmer. It's it's amazing in the last like you know, decade plus. So, it, definitely check out a Shimmer show if you can or check them out on streaming too. That supports good man. stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Support Shimmer. <laughs> Very nice. Mir just dogging you for going to the <laughs> one of these. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Bill goes to the shows and we all live vicariously through him. How about this, Alicia? When we were doing Talk and Shop, Jay Bo and I were doing the review, Bill, uh, Bill stopped on the side of the highway to call in and he FaceTimed into the show. Oh, yeah. On the side of the fucking highway. Dedication. It, it was like it was like you know when they get the reporter out there like the cover like a tornado. It was like uh, Bill Gardner right here. I am live on uh, I yeah, on site. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching Taco Shop. I mean, in the car, I got to be the passenger. So I'm watching. Holy shit! What a shit! What a shit show! Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jay Bonin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so what it. happened? It's amazing. <laughs> Man, this is the legend right here. No that shit. That was great. Uh, that was probably one of your most classic moments was the side of the highway hatching for, for the worst paper. No, it was, this wasn't Brown for Glory. It wasn't Slamversary. It was for Talking Shop of Mania. He risked his life on the side of the highway to come <laughs> and talk about it. But uh, great, great. I'm like, hey, there's good lighting here. Pull over. <laughs> lighting. We're at mile marker 78 here, guys. Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> Holy shit. What a fucking shit show pay for you that was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get back. Uh, Bravo's backstage making some phone calls. This is where Tasha and Kira Hogan drop by and ask if they'll be invited to the wedding. He tells oh. them that uh, Ty is in charge. Who gets invited? Ty, not him. Ty is running the show. He, he's kind of has no say that. Uh, La huera loca. Is running everything. So, and they get pissed. They're not happy with this. And, uh, 
<laughs> they call them the blushing groom. <laughs> blushing groom. They you need to stand up, be your old man. Nice. I like that though. That's a great uh, shirt. Is that a tie? Is that and a, what is? No, that's a that, that's a Tasha. Yeah, Tasha. Tasha. That's a sweet ass shirt, actually. But they're trying to become the best groomsmen. Yes, and that's going to be awesome. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> happen too. I really, yeah, they, really. They want to. They want to teach him to become a man, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, wait, hey, whoa, 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 what's going on here? What, what are they going to do with him?" Uh, They're not going to take his extra, extra virgin olive oil. It's okay. (laughs) Extra, extra virgin. (laughs) No, they're look. They're trying to toughen the guy up. Like you know, he's he's kind of he's kind of scared of he's scared of Taya basically. You know, they want to make him stronger. Because we ain't scared of nobody. Nobody. If any one of them wanted to run up right now, you know what I do. They want to toughen him up. They're not scared of anybody. They're exactly. <laughs> uh, so we'll see where that goes. Um, now we head over to see what Brian Myers has to say. This is pretty cool. Now, I I didn't really know shit about Brian Myers prior, but I do like this this dude's look. He's got a good presence to him. Uh, I, he's got a, he's got a strong presence. I do like that. Uh, the most professional wrestler, as they call him, as he calls himself, and uh, he believes him and Willie Mack got off on the wrong foot. He's giving Willie Mack an opportunity to make things right between the two of them, you know, with a handshake. Come on, we gotta shake hands. Willie's music hits. He heads down to the ring, and he goes, "I ain't here for a handshake. I'm already here to take both my hands and, you know, wrap them around your goddamn neck and choke you out." <laughs> <laughs> Which I love the way Willie just talks. He literally talks like people would just talk in a street fight. He's great. He's so, so natural. Like it just like he doesn't even have to try to be wrestler. He's just like, man, I'm gonna take my fuck your handshake, man. <laughs> fucking shit, like shake your fucking neck, you know, whatever. So um, I like that. He says Impact Mansion granted him another match against Myers, and he wants it right now. Myers put up a fight, though, right, Bill? He was like, I'm not even dressed. What did he say? He was like, I'm not even dressed to fight. What the hell is this? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, like, and then gear. Willie's like, Willie's like, yeah, you got to come ready, man. You always have to have your gear ready with you. Your gear, kid. <laughs> if you're professional, a- you have your gear. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. You have your gear. He told him right, so but they go at it. Myers in street clothes against Willie Mack. Um, it was fun. It was a fun little. It was it was a good match. It was good good heat. I, I like that it's built obviously building to a nice little feud between these two. They got good chemistry, which I I thought was awesome right off the bat. Uh, Myers definitely lo- you know couldn't couldn't do fair. Low blowed him, got the win, stole one on Willie Mack tonight. But Willie looked great. Myers looked great. I just like that this is going to be. He built. I like this one to build out. This has this has some really good potential. They got good chemistry. I don't know if they've ever fought before, but they definitely. Um, yeah, I have to look back. Maybe because they were both regulars with Tommy with House of Hardcore for a while. I was say, yeah, so I, I almost Tommy. imagine they had to interact at some point, but could be because if they hadn't, they just that was complete natural chemistry off the bat with these two. So, so if they did, I can see where if they if they fought prior, I can see where it came from. Yeah. So, I liked it though. So yeah, very cool. The most professional. I think Josh even was like, "That was a real professional victory he had there." You know, or some shit. Yeah, he's giving him like the moose when he had the TNA early TNA treatment right now. Yes, <laughs> like that's professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh, Josh when he gets upset, I can only imagine. Like Josh's kid, you know, like he's 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 one of those parents, <laughs> like you know, you know, just kind of like um, you know, some parents like give you like the whole like I'm not mad, I'm disappointed thing. But Josh almost like gives you the. uh the sarcastic punishment back. Yes. Like, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a TNA champion. Like, you're, ah. a, you're a big shot. Huh? Oh, okay. All right. It's like, oh, shit, man. You know, you go, like, oh, shit. Man. Take, take it easy, guy. <laughs> like, give me a break. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> Gia Miller's with uh, Jordan Grace, and uh, Grace is pissed about Tennille. Yeah, she's uh, only briefly with me and Gia. Yeah. Yeah. So she's pissed about Tennille, right? She's like, she waltz back in the impact zone unannounced. By the way, I do like that they are like this is the this is the impact zone now. This is impact zone 2020 now. It's not Florida. It's a sound stage, but if there's no fans. This is a whole different impact zone, but they are referring to it as the impact zone. They do bring it back. They're doing it heavy again right now. I remember they did it like when they went to Bethlehem for like a long set of tapings. It's like, oh, the impact zone. So they'll refer to wherever they're at for a little bit of time as the impact zone. Then it will go away for like months and months and months and months. But now, now it's back the impact zone. I it, I always have an affinity to the term impact zone, so I'm okay with it. It sure. never stopped being the impact zone for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's always the impact zone. Wherever impact is, it's forever. The zone. the zone of impact. 
there was there was even a brief mention of us like i forget who said the word but someone said asylum and i was like hey there's an asylum oh. yeah who said that the inmates are running asylum or, yeah you're right yeah, yeah. You, you don't normally hear uh the asylum mentioned anymore but i there's only one asylum we get to see it every thursday on the throwback show guys you aren't watching the throwback show every thursday on tni we do the throwback episodes of total nonstop or of tna and we're on episode 41 this week right we're building up just a total sidebar we're building up to the greatest feud of the asylum years raven and jared we're almost at that oh point. geez did you watch those alicia did you watch the yes ones? Do you remember that Raven Jarrett feud? That was like mm -hmm. amazing. We're like right there. So it was bloody. So good. So fucking good. We're almost at that match though. But um, all right, let's keep going here. So Grace is like, you know what? Eh, I want some answers from from Tenille. Let's go get some answers. She goes, come on, camera guy. So she like walks her over, goes backstage. AC Baby's walking back there. You see AC kind of like, what the fuck's going on here? You know, he's a little confused. Uh, she marches up he's to. He's probably looking for a suicide costume that keeps floating around to everybody. <laughs> Here's a funny thing: suicide is booked for Warrior Wrestling in Chicago in like a couple of weeks. So my first question was, who the fuck is? It? Who is it? Is it Ace Romero? Who's fucking playing suicide? <laughs> One of you has to go and <laughs> find out who it is. I know who this is, man. <laughs> tell me, Basil won't tell me. He won't spill it. I'm like, I keep guessing. I, I have strong feelings on who it is. It's order of elimination. Whoever's at those autograph tables, who's an impact star. That's a good point. That's a good point. I guess I got to tell by the voice. I got to find this out somehow. Um, she walks up to a door. It says Tennille Dash went on it, knocks on it, and uh, the op door opens, and it's Caleb Connolly looking with hipster. A with a K. Caleb with a K. Connolly with a K. looking hipster as fuck. And she's like, <laughs> She's like, who the hell are you? And he's like, Caleb, with a K. And he's on his phone. He's like, oh, look, puppies. And she's like, he's looking. <laughs> and she's like, where's Tennille? He's like, oh, she's off on a shoot. And then all of a sudden, it breaks into the shoot photos, like her outside posing. And then, like, I like how they come back to it. All, like, very sitcom. Like, they come back. Yeah. I love it. Jordan's like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah. So he'll be here next week. And then, like, they're like what? And he oh, but you forgot. He forgot what he what Caleb is, his, his oh, role. He's yes, a PP. A PP. His, tell, I, PP. Tell, PP. Tell him what that stands for, Alicia. What is a PP? Personal photographer. Or as Personal I call it, Basil replacement. Basil replacement. Yeah. <laughs> Put him out of a fucking job, man. Rip Basil. Oh, <laughs> did you see what? those pics? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. He's out of a job. He's out of a job, man. Sorry, Basil. Oh, I'll add uh, so Caleb Connolly is back in Impact Wrestling. How cool, huh? Like he is, he's been, he's had some start and stops with Impact. You know, a little here and there's explosion, a uh, small run a couple years ago. Like he's just been very start and stop. Nice, super might, nice guy. Some might say he hasn't had a stop for a while. Yeah, exactly. So some might say. T. <laughs> <laughs> You know he's been he's been there for he's been in the system for a while, so it's kind of yeah. nice to see him back. He's been uh, very covered up in the system. Yes, for a while. yeah, that's how the theories are. Um, <laughs> the theories are that he's been covered up. Uh, you know, he's kept a lot of things under the hood. Let's say, so <laughs> uh, let's just say that. Masked but, from the general public. Yeah, some might say that too. But he's uh, it's good to see him kind of get a new character, a fresh set of you know, fresh coat of paint on. Uh, on Caleb Conley, just see what he can do. So it's cool. He's um, he's uh, he's he's a good talent, man. He just now I don't think they ever found a right place for him. This could actually be it. This could really be cool because he, he did a good promo. I like that. Oh, Lakers in the house. Lakers. Oh, those f bombs. Oh, <laughs> Let me hear those f bombs. I can't wait. Wait, Lakers. You never confirmed. Are you going to that show where Bill's going to be in Atlanta? Are you still going to that? Because I told you, Bill, if you if you and him are at the same show. Masks on. I do want you to get there. I want you to fucking have him tape him swearing up a fucking storm, man. I want this guy to just tear it apart on video. I, I was I was telling J Bone earlier during the uh, the official co stream every Tuesday night of Impact on Access on Twitch, uh, but uh, may, maybe do some exclusive Twitch content, uh, maybe nice. some pre show stuff, maybe uh, just sure. walking around. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe 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 Lakers will be there if he's there. So. I, I also want to imagine Lakers as a very, very soft-spoken guy in person with a British accent. Like, hello, Mr. Mr. God, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, I apologize. Very for bison. 
100 percent pure beef. 100 percent pure bison meat, not beef. <laughs> <Let's remember that. laughs> Apologize for all the profanity on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> my very soft spoken, very chill. And then you know, as soon as the show starts, he's like, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> Burning hell all even shit like that. That's what it's oh, so Bill, counting on you to get all that on tape. Whatever you can get on tape, I want it on tape. Uh, <laughs> Steels and Hogan backstage talking with Bravo still when Valkyrie, the Valkyrie, overhears them and confronts them. She's like, mind your own business. Do not come to Bravo and Rosemary's wedding. I don't want you there. And Steele's gets in Valkyrie's face. And she goes, uh, he goes, he goes, you know, what's up? Who do you think you are talking to me that way? Blah, 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 back and forth. Valkyrie's like, you want to settle? We'll meet in the ring tonight. I'm, I'm the long train knockout champion of all time. Who are you? Which which always pisses anybody off. I don't even know who you are. I don't even know who you're, what, what your name is. And then that's what pisses <laughs> off Tasha. Tasha was not happy about that. And it's Tasha versus uh versus the Valkyrie. Tonight, which is a La great match. Vera loca. Very nice. Very nice. Who hit the bill? Was that you? Are you are you on the control? Oh, it's was J Bone on the controls. Very nice. All right, J Bone. Good job. <laughs> but I do like this is a good match for um for Tasha coming up. This is nice, a nice breakout because Taya versus anybody is is a good good for whoever stepping stone, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a good like it'll immediately raise your stock, which I love. So good for her. Tag matches next, though. The Guns taking on the Rascals. Tag belts on the line. This is the rematch from the Slammiversary. And this was fantastic. I think the star of this match was Wentz. Sorry. I mean, I know he took a beating. But, man, I was, like, literally in pain with him during. Because <laughs> he was, like, dude, he was screaming bloody fucking murder. And I was, like, oh, shit, man. Is he hurt? Like, you know, there's a moment sometimes where you kind of lose yourself in these things. You're, like, man, I think he's hurt. Yeah, like, I, you get yeah. sold. Holy, he had me. j Ball, he had me all the way. He, he, he sold me hook, line, and sinker, man. Okay. He got me on this. j Ball has no reaction. I, I, <laughs> hit you, I, I give you a softball, j Ball. This was a soft, All you say was, yeah, all you'd say was, yeah, good. You're right. You're right, Trent. Or fuck off. I was listening to you. Give me something. Go cut his mic. I gave you, I gave you, I gave you, I gave you a, gave you a hey. Yeah, man, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, hey. You know, j Ball, <laughs> I, I really. I, I might need I might need Kyle to start calling in just so I have something to play off. If you're gonna sit there and silent treatment me when I need Bill, take it, take just take it off his hands before I get before I get upset. Take it off his hands. What do you think of Wentz's selling? I thought Wentz broke out. I, 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 I know Wentz, and I, they even made a comment like uh, it's like has Dez even been in the match yet? Yeah, I caught that. <laughs> like because because it was like he he started the match, but he was out pretty quick. And then as me and J Bone are watching it, like we're seeing him, like he can barely move. And then he got tagged back in again once Des was in there. It's like, Des, the guy can, can't even walk, and you tagged him back in. What are you doing? Too yeah. much time in the treehouse, Des. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He was looking like me when I wake up in the morning. I can barely walk to the bathroom because my back is so fucked up. <laughs> it's like I, I, I saw him limping into the ring, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's me. It's, it's, I, could, I, I actually felt that. That was, yeah, that, was, yeah. that was hard. That was hard. He was pretty beat up. So, yeah, yeah, I, I love the finisher. I love the finisher where he, he does the push in the air onto him. But you knew that wasn't going anywhere. And, uh, no and, run in the pool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The hot fire flame is my one of the best finishers, though. It is such a cool finisher visually, and I gotta put over Basil. He'll he'll get like a set of photos. It's like each frame of that move, which is so cool. He'll get like the jump, the push, the shove, and the, and the float over. It's so cool. It's so uh, cool. I love, and he missed it, so that was it. You know, he was out. Um, and then they got you know they they took him out. They got the win on this one. And the guns retain the championship. Now that bummed me out because I was really hoping this was it, man. Really fucking hoping this was it for the Rascals. Uh, I had high hopes because I know we've been advocating for those guys forever. But it didn't end there. The North run out, oof, start attacking the guns. Madman Fulton and Ace Austin run down. They start attacking. The Good Brothers come out. The, the guns is aid. The Rascals, now, did I miss something? The Rascals, they were on the outside during all this, right? Mm -hmm. And they got in later, is that right? What happened? Like, where did they Yeah, they came back in, like, during when, like, uh, kind of the North and then Madman and Ace are kind of working together a little bit yeah. against the, uh, the, the guns. Uh, but then, so at that point, they're out of the ring. And then the Good Brothers come to even those odds. Then once the Good Brothers come in and clear, clear it, 
Uh, then Dez makes his way back in because Zach still hurt him with the knees, and he does the uh, crash and burn outside onto Madman and takes it. And then Wentz jumps in and actually knocks him down. He jumps on the him. <laughs> yeah, he does like a flyover and, and yeah, he does and, a flyover yeah. too. So, so, so they get in, then they get back in, and then you kind of have all the face face teams uh, mm-hmm. in the ring as uh, as we close out that segment. But yes. obviously, a lot the whole that's. I know we're kind of talking about it, but this was kind of waiting in the wings, with, except we probably didn't know back then if they'd be a tag team, per se, Ace and Fulton, but all those top-level tag teams, which we call, like, the main event tag team scene, we'll say. Yes, yeah. So they, they got a nice, and we're gonna, we'll talk about it towards the end of the show. They do announce what all these guys are doing uh, next week. So this was, that's your, I mean, that's, with the exception of a few of those, that's your tag division right there, but that's, that's some heavy hitters in that match coming up, or that whole brawl. But the thing is, it's like it's anyone's ball game to get those tag belts off the guns now, because you're putting everybody in line at this point. You know, North has a title rematch at some point, or they already had the rematch, but North wants another shot. Good Brothers are lining themselves up. Ace and Fulton are on the streak. Rascals, they lost today, so it's I don't know if they're gonna get another shot soon, but I feel like they should. So a lot going on in the tag division. I'm very, yeah. very curious how this books out to bounce. Yeah, my earliest, my early prediction is multi-team match. Obviously, will will happen, and the one of the guns will not be pinned when they lose the belts. Yeah, classic, classic finish, right? Where you yeah. kind of like protect everybody that way. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious where it goes. I'm curious how they how they wrap that one up. That's yeah, be I, I've been calling it for a while. I want Full Metal Mayhem. That's what I want. All right. Cool. Let's see. Let's see where we end up with that one. Um, I do. I do want to see. I do want to see something. I, I do want to see it make. I don't want to see it rushed. I'd like to, if you're gonna do this. Let's let's build it out. So whoever is gonna be wherever that match is, like I want everybody to make sense getting into it because you know some teams have a lot more momentum than the other ones. So let's let it make sense. I have full faith in the team to write it that way. So just curious how they play it out. Uh, Katie and Rob backstage. They announced they have a new talk show. They got signed uh, for a new talk show. The whole effing talk show is going to premiere on Impact next week. Uh, she also reminds us that her favorite letter bill is A. a. <laughs> um, was, oops, that was going to be D. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> How many D's? Yikes. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> That's fire. Vitamin. Uh, <laughs> vitamin D's. My God. My God, you guys. She's a vitamin. She's a vitamin A. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Way more she's so here. cute. She's, uh, she's, she's growing on me every week. Every week she is. She's just so fun. Like, I don't know how anybody can be mad at her. Like, nah, she's, she's a party. She People like, he, she, they, she gets, he takes a lot from some fans online. But, man, she's just having a good time. He's just absolutely just having fun. Hey, Which, and she's always sharing stuff from the show, so you can't hate that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Very supportive of our show, too. So, Katie, we're all with you, man. You always give us a retweet, give us a shout. So, thank you to, to Katie Forge for that. She's uh, a doll. She is super cool. Uh, at the ICU compound, Sammy Callahan is making uh, 8675309 Jenny references. Because, uh, is that what that was? I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, I, I don't know. Look, I, I you know, 40 oh, yeah. something years old, I've heard you know, over 40 oh, yeah. decades worth of music, and that one just was not clicking tonight. So, thank you. I just there's a part of the song where it's like, You got it, you got, you got it. it, you got it. Uh, it was fantastic, though. He, um, he, he, you know, he's just kind of addressing the whole RVD thing, the feud there got going on. It's all about the numbers. He says, Next week, though. I want to make my presence felt on your show, but I'm not going to be on it. What is he? I'm not going to be on. But I might hack it. Is that what he? He said. He's, what he? He said he's not coming along. He's going to do something. He says he's like, got other plans. Other yeah. plans. You don't expect him to be doing so. Convincing so, Jess to team up with him and and have a I'm, rivalry. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Jess, but then what happens to Nevaeh? That's my only. No, thing. I know, I know. I just wishful yeah, thinking. Good. It's just wishful thinking. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Trust me. You know, we we talked about that while we were watching it. We we're like, "Ooh, does you know, Jessica Havoc finally, you know, team up with him?" Which, yeah, I, we've all we've all said that over the last few years, especially ever since she came back. It seemed like a 
natural fit, but they don't always do that because yeah, we've noticed that with uh, when when, Mar when Morrison, uh, excuse me, uh, Mundo, no, what was it? Oh, Impact, Impact, it's, it's Johnny Impact. My, my bad. He's, that is Mike. He said is... he said so many different different names. Uh, John <laughs> Hennigan, John Hennigan, excuse me. Um, you know when he came in from Lucha Underground. And, uh, you know, and by the way, Trent, your hair is better than his. Does that make you feel better? Okay, we continue. Very, um, he knows how to butter me up, this guy. <laughs> I really try to smoothen things over sometimes. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, oh, very nice. Okay. All right. A little, part, a little too much information for me, but that's okay. Go on, Jay Bone. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> when they brought Taya and Johnny in, um, my – first assumption was I was like oh okay well they're coming over from Lucha Underground because they started to free up some people's contracts and let them do some wrestling shows you know anything but you know the E and uh, I just assumed they were going to bring them in together and they didn't and it was actually a really long time before they put them together they kept them separate for a while so that was impressive so and they, they did the same thing with uh, with Havoc and, and Sammy so so maybe maybe it's because uh, look the whole the whole company is really getting flipped on its head after Slammiversary. A lot of different chapters are getting started with all sorts of people on the roster. So, hey, maybe this is one of them. Could Agreed. Be. Could very well be. I, I like it, though. It's kind of – it freshens some stuff up. It's fresh feud for Sammy. You know, he's not really in the title picture. He's kind of on this whole other – I mean, and I do, I do like – I need – I want more ICU to happen, like more shit, like him to disrupt even more – Yes. yes, more of that, more like disruption. Just, just so you can keep reminding the viewer that he has that control. Yes, he's feuding with RVD, but it's like he can he can disrupt anything he wants. He's feuding with Katie, not RVD. That's RVD true. is just cattle fodder. That's a good point. You're right because he does remind us of that too. Well, he he beat... talked about her the whole time. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You're totally right. And he already beat RVD, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And the feud is with Katie. You're right. I told you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I slipped. <laughs> Sammy. Yeah. RVD is just a bystander in the feud with Katie. At this Agreed. point. Yeah. No, Sammy is a big advocate for intergender wrestling. He's. Yeah. He's a big. He's done a lot of those. And he's like, I, there was an AAW match where he fought Statlander in like a, in like match of the year kind of shit. I mean, he can. And, and then, then Tessa, obviously the whole Tessa thing, which I mean, we don't say her name anymore, but Hey, but you uh, ever see his old Lufisto matches. I never did. No, I can. Good imagine. Shit. So he's always got good chemistry wrestling with, with women. So he could probably bring out like an amazing match out of Katie. You know, Katie's the whole thing. She's more character than wrestler, but Katie imagine? could bench press Sammy. I'm telling you, she's tough. No question about it. Like that could be a fun match to watch happen. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm down to see it because like I can only imagine how interesting that one could be. It'll be oh, a twerk off. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that Sammy twerk. <laughs> he already did it. What was it last week or the week before? I mean, two weeks ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he was twerking. Yes. <laughs> Shaking what his mama gave him. Uh, Sammy Callahan. He's. I love how he always likes to remind. Me. He's like, I am a white guy from what's what the hell town? It's from the country Ohio. You know, the Delphine country of Ohio, Belfontine, Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. That's the town. You know, it's, it's a farm town. It's like five hundred people in my town. I'm a short white, white kid from Belfontine, Ohio. Plays video games and look at me now. You know, it's <laughs> nobody does that shit. It reminds I, me. Of I, I can tell you, if if if, if Sammy started. Attempting to twerk or twerk on on TV, I only got one thought. Yeah, this is horrible. <laughs> I will, uh, you know, it, it depends what the ratings are, Jay Bone. If the ratings spike during a Sammy Callahan twerk, mm. you're wrong. It's gonna have it to be like when KL gimmick. invades the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> back at the Impact Zone, Tasha with Kira in her corner versus Taya and John E. Bravo and Mr. Mundo in her corner. This was a great match. These two, give me another one of this one. I, I will take one more match of this. Fantastic match with these two. The Valkyrie does win with the Road to Valhalla, but it was just great back and forth. John, at one point, is taking phone calls, planning the wedding. Josh Madden is like, what is he doing? He's like, what are you doing? You're you can't be planning your wedding here. And Madison's like, let him multitask. Obviously, you've never planned the wedding. <laughs> hilarious because they're married. So, um, but it was it was just a great match. I I think it was, 
I don't know if you get. I think well, next week they announce it's it's Ty, it's Taya versus Kira next week, right? Correct. So you, you're, Kira, Kira. Uh, <laughs> I I texted you guys when I was on my trip last week. I saw a license plate that just said Kiera. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Tierra. Tierra. <laughs> I can never get over that. Just the way Tessa Blanchard would say Kiera, what's not like she's she's like holding back tears, and it's always Tierra. Tierra. It's never. I don't know. It always like always stuck out to me. Maybe I'm crazy, but good match. <laughs> it always was hilarious. Like she'd be so like, Tierra. I'm like, oh, are you crying? Are you sad? What's wrong with you? <laughs> but she was, she always talks like she had to cry. Right? Am I crazy? Or did she always no, have your voice in her? Like, like oh. that choked up. Yeah. Anything could set her up. Yeah. All the time. And I'm like, why is she always sounding like she's fighting back tears? Deanna has that too. Deanna has that like like it sounds like you're about to cry any second. Like you're fighting tears. Like I'll have to like, listen. I'll have to listen. It's I'll a go little, back to the black tie affair. A lot of emotion. It's a I'm little emotion. squeak in her voice. Yeah. Very yeah. 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 You're not gonna get the best of me, Jordan. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's okay. like, like okay. if it was I'll any more, if it was any more prominent, she she could almost pull off a Paul Stanley. Oh, <laughs> come on, people! <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to have the best bat in the world and knock us champion, baby? Yeah, Paul Stanley's amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be like the end of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. What the yeah, was like like that. That. I mean, no spoilers. Around. I haven't seen it yet. Well, yeah, that's, that's not well. Th this would be a long uh, spoiler. Oh yeah, <laughs> this, ain't the old, this ain't the new one. This is an old one. Oh okay. There's also oh by the way, anybody who hasn't seen the new one yet, just a little tip: stay after the credits. Bill, did you stay after the credits? I did stay after the okay. credits. So stay after the credits, Alicia. When you do watch it, watch past the credits. There's there's a, a right. Easter egg that not I guess a lot of people missed because they didn't watch after the credits. Um, all right, so where are There's, we going? I, I gotta say this. This mm. reminds me. It's in one of the first episodes of um, Full. No, what is it? What's Freeland's show with the uh, front row right? material? What's that? Front row material. Front row material with uh, Mickey Whip Whipwreck and uh, Jerry Lynn. Is it Whipwreck Mickey. that does? Yeah, Mike. Mickey <laughs> does all the Mike. impressions. Yes, Mikey does all the impressions. Yeah, he does the best paul stanley and I, for, I it's like it's like four or five or six one of those first episodes and and they're talking about uh, uh corona or whatever they're talking it's about so funny and it, it's it's the paul stanley is just absolutely phenomenal it, it would make it would make paul proud because he'd he, be like damn that sounds like me he, he went into this whole Mikey Whipwreck, this whole thing about like the coronavirus and like stocking up on toilet paper in Paul Stanley's voice. Oh, yeah, that's what he it was. Like, hey, people, I know we got to deal with this corona, but we all got to better stock up on that toilet paper because we all going to be shitting for the next three months. Like, there's a whole fucking rant <laughs> yeah. about, about stocking up on toilet paper uh, during the coronavirus as Paul Stanley. Like, it is, I was rolling like in my living room. I was fucking <sighs> hilarious. So I highly recommend check out Front Row Material. It is a great, great yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we go now. This was an awesome segment. Now we're we're at so Moose shows up at his old high school and he sees his coach. He's coach, like, yeah. coach is there, and his coach is like, oh, he's like, yeah, I think he called him by his shoot name too, didn't he? Did he call him? Did he call him the shoot name? I thought he, I heard it. Maybe not. <sighs> I thought he called him Quinn, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know if he did or not. That I missed. Okay. And he's like, he's like, hey, oh, you're, he's like, you're the, you're the best goddamn player, right? God, son of a bitch, oh, they ain't been the same without you. He's like, thanks, coach, thank, thank you. And it's like, oh man, they he, he got the fire, kid. You had that fire. And he's like, coach, you still got your picture over here. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. moving his picture. I grab picture. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, coach, okay, thank you, thank you, coach. He's like, he's like hey, you see, happen to see EC three around? And he's like, uh, he's like, he's like, tall guy, muscular guy, black hair. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's him. He goes, haven't seen him. <laughs> and like <laughs> it's a hoodie. And then um he goes, Hey, he goes, he's like, All right, thanks, coach. I appreciate it. I, I go find him. He's like, All right, remember what I told you? Remember what I taught you? Always control your narrative. And he's like, What? What'd you say? And he's like, and then he turns up now. He turns into who I thought was EC3, but it wasn't EC3, right? It was no, it was just a guy. Just a dude wearing the EC3 hoodie, though. The free EC3 hoodie. Yeah, and then there's a couple other guys. Uh, 
players on the team, current just, just, guys just, on the just, football just, team. Just football guys wanting to talk to the coach. They, they didn't want no beef with, with Moose. But the, the creepiest part of this whole promo was when all of a sudden the switch went off on the coach and he just went like into yeah, full blank Scooby-Doo stare mode. Control your narrative. Like, well, well, he did say you have been warned. Yes. Yeah, he did put that out there too. Yeah, he's like, he's like, control your narrative. I didn't see it. How did I miss this? Did you miss this segment? It was <laughs> oh, it was yeah. Good. yeah, it was, it was, it was like he went I gotta from, rewatch he went, it. He went from he went from coach popping about his best student, best player ever to. Yeah, remember what I told you though. Control your narrative. That's control. awesome. Oh yeah, he just like, I gotta like, rewatch like, it. Like so he was like, it. like, like he, all of a sudden a switch or a, a trigger word went off, and like you're, you're being hypnotized, and all of a sudden. You you know it forces you to act a certain way. You have yeah, to do yeah, and you have no control over it. That's exactly what the coach did. And, so bad. Oh That's man, cool. it was crazy. And and Moose was like, oh, "What the hell?" It was like we children <laughs> on the corner or some shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, with Penzer on earlier talking about Piper, it reminded me of They Live. Resist. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Sunglasses. Such a trip, though. I did not when we were talking. I did meet Penzer on that Piper book tour. Oh and, wow! Yeah, he was sitting there next to Piper, and like I was, uh, and I didn't take a camera. I got that book signed by Piper, and I had just watched. Total, this is a total sidebar. I had just watched that chain match, that dog collar match he had with Greg Valentine at, at Starcade '83. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, I was like, right. I just, I just watched that match. The other day, he's like, "Oh, let me show you something, bro." And he like shows me. <laughs> he's like, "This is all I got left of that here. I can't hear a goddamn thing after about." <laughs> I was deaf, right? I was deaf for a three day. I still can't hear nothing, brother. And I was like, "What a great match!" So I'm like, "Oh, I love you, right?" He's like, oh, "I love you too, bro." He's like, "Come on, God bless you." He stands up, he gives me this fucking hug. He's like, "I love you, God bless you," and I was like, "I can't believe that just happened." I didn't have a fucking camera to do- to document this. Oh man. <laughs> Roddy Piper hugging the shit out of me, telling me he loves me. Fuck. I do have I still have the autograph book and an eight by ten. That I nice, there you go. nice. I did double dip. You got I double dip. He was doing two autographs. I brought something. But no, that was great. I think he shoved one of the players into the file cabinet on his way out. Moose yeah. Out. Yeah. Kind of gave a push. Get out of here. It was great though. I, I thought that was fantastic. Uh I did like, I won't spend too much time on this, but I did like the uh impact plus moment of the week. Was Eddie Edwards and EC3 versus Moose and Mike Bennett from 2016? They kind of uh, threw that in there. So Bennett's been very, yeah, Bennett's been thumping every company's. Uh, well, Bennett went on a, on a bit of a tear on um, Saturday. It was like support, then insert promotion here. The one about Impact got the most traction, though. Apparently, yeah, that was nice. So who knows? I mean, I know he's showing up to the NWA soon, but he can be anywhere. <laughs> Yeah. People's favorite entrance music. <laughs> now, wait, you know, uh, our buddy Gary, uh, Gary's Movie Emporium, who does a lot of the commenting that he's the who next. Was actually live. We went so late. Gary was in the chat when me and Kyle were on last this morning. This is amazing. So, Gary, if anybody doesn't know, Gary leaves like, you know, he comments as he listens to our shows the next day. So he'll leave like 20 comments. I'll wake up to it's a shit ton from Gary. There's like 50 comments. Which is amazing. We thank we appreciate Gary for doing that. But yeah, you guys were on so late that Gary was waking up to listen to our show to like do what he does, go to work, whatever he's doing. But like he was live with you guys on, on KL's hit and run show <laughs> last night. Unbelievable. But Gary, Hilarious. Gary pointed out though that the miracles character, he goes, it was based on Bradley Cooper's from The Hangover. Is that true? I didn't know that. He goes, he goes, that's what he said. Now I don't know if that's that's what it was based on, but if anybody I didn't get from that. the hangover <laughs> from the hangover. And I was like, is it really? I I didn't catch that. No, because I actually I was a big fan of Mike Bennett's in Ring of Honor. And when he came over to Impact, I honestly to me, in, in just for me personally, it fell flat. I felt like he just walked out of a goodwill with that crazy ass outfit. He oh, I, I, I love that. I love that outfit. Yeah, <laughs> and I just, I, I was just like, why well, you guys couldn't put him in a better suit showing up on Impact for and his look, debut. look, remember who was on the side of him, Jay Boone? That's true. 
I mean, he had some Maria marks. in that gold sequin dress. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. So she she stood out by far, you know. He was the steak, and she was the sizzle. Good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still liked him. I just, I just, I don't know. It just just felt weird to me. It just didn't, you know. Didn't didn't click, Jay. It didn't click. Yeah. All right. Uh, we go. Uh, we we go to real quick to Rhino. He meets up in secret with uh, Heath outside. Talk to him about his contract. He's like, I don't know where I stand, man. He goes, I got seventy eight children. He goes, you only have two. He's like, Dude, I, don't, I need a job, man. I need some pennies in my piggy bank, man. Like I'm I'm fucking hurting over here. Um, that advertising it adds up. It adds up. I need some more money. He's like, I gotta keep running those ads. And he's like, he's like, the fans are back. He's like, it's working. It's working. I need some money. He's like, and I was like, I got an idea how to get it. We'll go talk to a guy. There's only one guy who's walking around with. Well, we confirmed it's more than seventy dollars, right, Bill? What was the? Uh... It's seventy eight dollars. Our boy Truck. He uh, got in touch with him on the on the Twitter box, as Jabin would like to say. And that's yeah. And uh, he confirmed. He's like, "What is it? Sixty bucks?" He's like, "No, it's seventy eight, bro." <laughs> and I think we actually went over this in the hit and run. Yeah. I'm seeing if it's still in here. The image of it. Save. Yeah, because Truck did a friend of the show, Truck, who was uh, who was on a couple uh, last week. He yeah he got into it with Hernandez he goes come on it's only sixty three dollars he goes actually it's seventy eight bucks oh boy there it is right there come on man it's more like seventy eight dollars bro <laughs> <laughs> this is you don't get this anywhere else this is not fake wrestling news this is this is not <laughs> fake this is true this is this is right from the source man <laughs> and it's confirming it's seventy eight dollars on that roll. And, they all uh, want a piece of that seventy eight dollars they sure do they sure do uh, that's awesome though I like that. So Rhino definitely knows a guy with some cash. He needs cash. <laughs> as, as long as we're sharing stuff, this I, this was my big pop of the night. I just got to quick throw this out there. So, you know, right when this promo was going on, I was like, oh, quick, Heath for Impact, and put all the other, you know, uh, hashtags with it. And then I got a notification just a little bit later, and it was this. Nice. A little retweet from uh, Heath. A little retweet from Heath Did himself. Did you make that gif? Did you make that? No, I just yeah. typed in Heath and hoped that something with Heath would show up. <laughs> this, was, this was the first thing current that showed up. So I was like, oh, oh perfect. Very nice. Very nice. They're, they're, they're hugging. It's from yeah. like the, when he first showed up. And, you know, and I got the retweet and it made my night. So. Oh, very nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Um, no, that's cool, man. Uh, let's run down real quick. They announced next week's matches. Let's just throw them out there real quick right now before the main event. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so next week is going to be Deanna and Kimberly versus yeah. Kyle and Susie. My tag heavy. Tag <laughs> heavy. Brian Myers and William Max rivalry will continue with a third match. They got the rubber match going on. Uh, actually, I guess it's not a rubber match because Brian Myers won both, so <laughs> I cheated both times. Triple XL will renew their Wrestle House feud with the Deaners in a tag match. Uh, Kira will take on the Valkyrie. RVD's new talk show will debut, and we'll see an eight-man tag team match. The North, Ace Austin and Fulton versus the Guns and the Rascals, man. And then uh, that's huge. So next week is like Tag Wars for sure. That's going to be an awesome tag-heavy show. So you're a tag yeah. team wrestling fan? And I, I love tag team wrestling. You know, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's gone heavy on a couple other brands that I watch that I really enjoy, and it's it's nice to see that happen in in uh, Impact once in a while too. So I'm not complaining. Yes, no, that was cool, and I I can totally see. I can I'm predicting right now you'll have Reno Scum and probably in a vignette tomorrow you know, next week's show. You will get them involved. Maybe Fala and TJ will have a little something going on. So you'll have all your tags represented next week even maybe some of the women too maybe the knockouts tags might be represented in some way next week so all right main event time let's start wrapping this thing up eric young tommy dreamer this was the um on the open challenge at the top of the show on oh, the open challenge with the challenge at the top of the show so this was uh this was a like was it build a hardcore did they ever did they ever confirm what kind of match it ended up being old school rules they say it right at the mm. beginning of the match Okay, I missed that. So it was ended up being old school rules. Tommy was like, I'll take you on any type of match you want or whatever, right? So old school rules. Um, he pulled out everything though, man. Steel chairs, kendo sticks, um, all sorts Table. of weapons. Tables. Uh, this was good. It was it was just it was a brawl. It was totally like a psycho brawl. 
Uh, Dreamer actually pulled it out here. I thought you did a good job holding up with Eric on this one. Well, guys, so Rich Swan returns during the match, runs out, and returns during this. And, like, I was like, holy shit. So, but here's what got me, though. Um, well, actually, I should say, well, Eric wins. So I'm sorry to jump ahead. So Eric yeah. wins. They use the hockey mask. He's he the wins. pile dry. Yeah, he's the hockey mask part two. Jason hockey part part two. <laughs> pile driver. He wins the match. Then he's like the post match beat down. He's wrapping the he's yeah. wrapping the chair around Dreamer's leg, about the kendo stick it. Then Rich Swan comes out with on crutches, throws a crutch at Eric, you know, kind of throws up <laughs> and hits him. Here's what got me though. And my and I don't know if I'm nitpicking here, but I felt Josh was not surprised to see Rich Swan. Like it was like, oh Rich Swan's here. Like I'd be like, wait a minute, which what the fuck's he doing? Like he's retired. I, I expected way more excitement out of Rich Swan's return. Surprise um, or something. Yeah, I was just like, it's almost like, yeah, you knew he was going to come out. Like, no, this was supposed mm-hmm. to be a comeback. Um, I'd have to I, go back and listen to exactly how, how it was. I don't remember what Yeah, he, we what were popping, so yeah, we probably weren't paying too much attention to Josh. Yeah, I, I don't remember what he did at all. I was, I was excited to see him because I was like, okay, if he's not retired, you know they got to sell the injury. He got brutally attacked from Eric. Take a few weeks off. He's going to come back at some point and do a slow build to whatever, whether it be you know Victory Road, Bound for Glory, whatever. So, uh, but yeah, we we, abs- we absolutely popped. It was great to. Uh, it was great. I and, and look, wrestling simulation. I don't hate Josh. Josh Josh booked my band to play Bound for Glory weekend. I don't hate Josh Matthews. I just this is a call. I'm, and one thing that, that Bravo told me in person, he said, I like that you guys call things out for truth. You, know, you don't just sugarcoat everything. And this is something that I felt deserved a much better reaction, you know, because he was supposedly retired. Last time we saw Rich Swan, he was wincing for, in, you know, crying death that he was gone. Like, that's it. His career is over again. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's, it's constructive. Yeah, we're not, we're not saying Josh is shit by any means. No, yeah. it's constructive criticism. That's all it is. But just something like this, I I wanted a lot more. And and look, and this is not the not to play too much comparison game, but we're we we're watching throwback and you see how Tanae would sell something like that. And I get it, there's there's crowd, maybe it's a little different, there's no crowd, wherever it might be, but I still say like that that deserved a way stronger shock. You know, maybe not like you just need like it was shocking to see him come back. I didn't expect Rich Juan to be there. I expected more of a shock from from Josh too, not to sound like, not to sound like, oh, you knew it was going to happen, kind of thing. So that that's my only that's my gripe on it, and I'm just saying it like, for truth, I just want I want him to sell it to the other to the to the new viewers more like that too. One thing I gotta want uh, that I really want to play back is well because he does play well off of Madison and Madison does play well off of him. They do work well together. I'd actually yeah. have to go back and see how they both reacted. I, I feel now, now, I'm even, now I'm even more curious. Like, how did she react too? Let's let yeah, definitely. We're done off the air, and then it, uh, guys in the chat too. If you uh, you guys want to watch it again, man, you tell me if I'm off here. But I feel like it, it wasn't as um, powerful of a shock, and I wanted more out of it just because of what it was. So I th- I think I, I will give Josh this. I think it was a little tempered because he was in the crutches. It wasn't a healthy Rich Swan. So how do you react to Rich Swan standing there, maybe not able to do anything, maybe just to look as a bystander until he throws the crutch? And as I think people said, like, he, he makes a real big deal out of the crutch throw, and then it kind of doesn't really go anywhere from there. So, like, that was kind of like the, the, big, the big call was the crutch throw. But it's like if he was a healthy Rich Swan, I think it would have been a big pop. Or if he would have done what he did at Slammiversary, look like he's hurt, but be like, oh, I'm fine. Yeah, when someone, yeah, you can play off of that. When, when someone runs down to the ring 100 miles an hour and they go, oh, my God, look at this guy coming down to the ring. Who is that? Oh, it's so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. When, when Swan's crawling down to the ring, hopping on one foot, got a lucky shot in with the crutch, it, it does have a totally, it does come off totally different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like you should have sold the return more and the crutch less like this like it's like okay he's here no shit he's gonna hit him with something obviously but i don't know i i, I thought I, I i just felt it was an underwhelming reaction that's just me Uh-oh. but what's going on what's going on bill oh, oh, shit. oh. oh. 
is. Oh, oh ready for the show. David Penn's interview. I've been getting ready for this all week, guys. I've got all my questions ready. <laughs> right Where is he? Time. Bring him in. Bring him in. Right on time for the end of the show. Right oh. on time for the end of the show. That's all right, Trent. I belong on the after show anyway. Hey, Vince Russo. How you doing? <laughs> Very nice to have you. Hey, hey. hey what a scumbag! He is here. Oh, we're, we're, we're about to wrap up, so we're going to go to After Dark. After so you're right on time for After Dark. Well, I show up for After Dark, Trent. That, that's very what's nice. going on here. Very, oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, very, oh, very nice. nice. Okay. Very nice, Kyle. All right, listen. So that's the show. Eric Young. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Lots of Impact. Impact Talk for Impact Fans. I'm your host, the looks out my host, Jim Out. Jim Out. Jim Out. <laughs> <laughs> I, like the, I like the howl of it. You've never barked, Trent. You've never barked. You've never barked like a dog once, but for some reason, in that uh, caricature right. of you, you just started barking like a dog. In my heart, you somehow that, that's the second time that's been played tonight. Yeah, that would already got played once. Thanks to Bill, it got played once. Oh well, I wasn't here, so it didn't count. Thank you, Bill. Though you keep, keep it, keeping my name alive, I appreciate that. You bang for the gang. You bang for the gang, Bill. You do. I tried to bang for the gang. Yeah, we were, we were banging for the gang on Hit and Run last night. We talked right? all about it, man. We sold the oh. shot at Hit and Run today. Okay, thank worry. you. Thank you. All right, you guys aren't as bad as I thought you were. You could have used better artwork, but I'm just saying. I'm just, yeah, I'm just doing what I thought. Oh, well, it's the Hit and Run, Trent. What do you expect? This is a bunch of crap. This just sucks. That's, yeah. that's, man, that's horrible. New. That's what I expect. All right, listen. Let me wrap this up here. Uh, j you still want to throw some news in since we, since we missed it at the, at the beginning? You want to throw a couple news bits in? You got, you got anything? Oh, oh, sure. Jiminy Christmas. And now, Jay Bones News. Total Nonstop Impact Podcast. Jay Bones looks like Homer Simpson. And he's not very intelligent. Searching for my fake wrestling fake news. news. You know, you, you come in here, Kyle, and you cut into my. I was about to do the voiceover. That's what I I do the overlay. I created I, that, Trent. You know, you, you don't take know. it when I'm not here, but when I show up, you you, you put baby, you put yourself in the corner, baby. Take it easy, take it. All right, Jaybo, give me give me some news before we wrap it up here today. Oh, I'm gonna get some popcorn and listen to you two guys. Yeah, this is great. Uh, <laughs> we're, married, we're like a married couple at this point, you know. Me and Trent loved each other at first, and month by month. I've just grinded our friendship <laughs> down into – it's just – it's a piece of floss now, really. Now really? we only talk on the show. There's no more discussions outside of it. That, that, that's it. Look it's, like, it's, a, it's like Edith Bunker and, and, uh, and Archie. I just don't know which is which. Yeah, All right, I mean, so – They tell us we have great chemistry, but I just hate the guy. <laughs> let's hear the news, Jay. Go ahead, right. Jay. What do you got today? All right, so the, kind of a continuation off of the uh, – uh, Impact Plus Weekly that we did. Uh, we talked about a lot of different T-shirts. That look, the between the PWTs, it, it's it's a long night for Alicia. She's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our girl RBF right there, man. <laughs> we'll we'll wrap it up. Don't soon. kill me. Right. No, I'm, I'm just playing. We might guys. need to get that uh, Penzer bite. It's like. Well, what are you asleep? Penzer fucking bravo her today. What are you sleeping over there? Yeah, how, how did the Penzer uh, interview go? Is it a good one? You guys, it uh, was great. It was great. Uh, he was uh, awesome. Yeah. He was a couple a uh, couple audio. Was uh, it was so it was a good long successful interview. It wasn't one of those like Minute Man where you blow the load in like thirty seconds and it turns. To <laughs> he shit, gave right? us an hour. It's man. awkward we did, silence. We did an hour with Penzer. You cry oh, yourself yeah. to sleep after. How about this? It proved to me one. here. We did an hour with Penzer. We're at two twenty two now, which means means we wrapped the whole review in, in an hour and 20 minutes, uh, which means I don't know how we end up going two and a half hours when there's a regular review and no interview because uh, we just did the whole show in an hour. <laughs> so maybe it's fucking Kyle's fault. Yeah, anyway, go on, Jay Get Wrap this up with your with your news, please. All right, so just, just to wrap it up in, in a, with a pretty little bow, please go check out uh, Shop Impact. There's a ton of new merch on there as far as new tees, from everyone, uh, Ace Austin, uh, PWTs has a bunch of new ones too. Uh, Sammy's got new ones. What's what's the new one I saw? Uh, EY's got a new champ shirt on there, which it's a little awkward because uh, you know uh, the old uh, uh, Eddie Edwards one is still up there. But hey, you know you love Eddie Edwards and you wish he was champ. You could buy one of those too. That's fine. Why is that awkward? He got he got himself a shirt because he's champion now. Jay, nothing awkward about it. That's how it goes. It oh yeah, it's, it's just, just you know. By the time it was up there, he lost it. You know, you don't, you don't sound very proud about it, Jack. Proud as a peacock. 
I'm much more. Be. I'm much more happy for uh, EY. I'm just saying. I'm I'm a bit of a heel in this whole okay, whole mess, okay. right. but anyways, uh, so yeah, go get yourself a T-shirt. And by the way, I just want to thank everyone again who did take part in the Labor Day sale over at PWTs and uh, bought some uh, new merch. Off so of, many uh, PNI T-shirts got sold. By the way, thank you guys. Holy yes, shit! Thank you up. so much. Yeah, really appreciate it. Um, awesome, and thank so, you to Josh Paxson for the new the cast of characters design. That oh, one, that yeah. one was a couple of couple of shirts this weekend so thank bunch you a bunch yeah. of ugly mugs on that shirt that's gonna be a hot <laughs> seller him, hot smeller <laughs> go ahead jay this is, well, yeah, i don't know what you're talking about man we're, we're freaking gorgeous on there <laughs> I, want, I can't wait till the cartoon series comes out god damn uh like you know adult swim some shit at you know one in the morning 15 minute bit uh jay bone wants a tni hentai is what he's trying to say that's, that's sick oh, you're a sick god. fuck buddy. Well, well, rumor was Robert Downey Jr. was going to voice him in the cartoon. Uh, that, was, uh, that, that, is that, that is a rumor. That is a rumor. It's out there. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't see it. But hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, like Just take it, Jay. It's Go better, ahead. Than, better than John oh, Cena showing up, showing up in a freaking cartoon. He can't even see that motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> um, you know, that joke would be better if this was a Monday Night Raw review, Jay. Uh, some impact jokes would be cool. Continue with your news. Yeah, Jay, what are we doing here? Can we, can we get on with this? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Try to wrap up the show. Hey, you know, Kyle showed up in my show, so what the hell? You no, know, Trent, um, I think we picked the wrong person to be the news guy because Jay is the one that's always stuck in thought. Probably should have been Bill or even Alicia. You know, Bill, Bill has been – he's been kind of Pearl Harboring Jay's news bit. Well, that's the thing. I feel like every time Jay goes to start the news and then Bill has to save him. Bill has to come in for backup. Yeah. But that's only when Kyle's here. No, yeah. <laughs> but, energy. But, energy. But, but you got that cool graphic with Jay Bone's face on it. That just works. Anyway, go on. Yeah. Yeah. We, right, we can do Jay Bone's news starring Bill. We start yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Bill that's Bone's news. Bill Bone's hot. news. Where's J Bone? Oh, he's underneath the desk. Oh. Um, uh oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right, what, else got, what else you got, Jay? Let's start. Let's start wrapping it up here. All right. So, uh, interesting bit. So, if you go over to uh, the YouTube of uh, Wrestle Zone, not to plug something else, uh, but they just did a nice little interview with Taya over there. Nice one with uh, uh, with Eric Young too. Um, in the uh, interview with Taya. Uh, he asked if there's any updates. Uh, for those of you who don't know, they were working on this movie for a few years now uh, called The Iron Sheik Massacre. Something to the effect of where the Iron Sheik gets killed off. Some crazy, weird, hokey special effects thing that, they, that they're that putting together with their own money. It's just taking forever to put together. Apparently, some of the special effects is done, and it's almost wrapped up completely. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I found, found that interesting. It was something that she was putting together with, uh, you know, Johnny Impact. Um, I think I think Cross was in it too. A handful of their friends all put it together on their own dime. Oh, by the way, uh, the, the former Johnny Impact is also in uh, a new movie coming out on the 17th on the dust youtube channel and he plays a really weird looking futuristic uh space fighter time traveler kind of i saw the trailer it was like a 30 second trailer uh earlier today and i wanted to just quick tell people about it because i thought it just like collect- it looked like a really bad version of back to the future is what it looked like, starring you know Johnny Impact, looking like uh, Battlestar Galactica from 1982. <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about anymore? <laughs> what the hell is going on here, Jay? <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's it's you water. Know, I swear to God. I, you know, I, I say wrap it up. Give me the- <laughs> shoot him off a little bit. Load the gun. Shoot him off. Leave one for Kyle. Take that fucker out and just hit me with the goddamn news. And we're talking about Johnny Impact playing Marty McFly over here. I don't know uh, what's Trent, going on. Trent just wants somebody to shoot him at this point. Just, really, just Trent, somebody shoot up. Trent and just, just put him out of misery. Up. <laughs> cut his mic. Cut his mic. Cut his life. Cut pew, my pew. life. Pew pew. That's 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 the news. I just that's had a couple the news. Things. Thank that's you, Jaybo. Jaybo, thank you very much, Jaybo. News. Uh, some of that, though, I gotta say, was longing for that big wrestling news. Don't believe anything that you read on the internet. The 
end of that was definitely very similar. That, that's what Meltzer reacted to. You know what's to. fucked up, though? You know what's fucked up, though? That clip, it just kind of represents, like, uh, an ideology in the sense that we might be ripping fake wrestling news that wasn't reported by those guys in the video, but it's just like we're just generalizing the whole scene. Oh, you know the whole saying? genre. Fuck all you motherfuckers, you know? Castrate them. Fuck you all. All right, let's get let's start wrapping it up. Guys, let's get our plugs in here, guys. Alicia, for the audio listeners, where can they find you? Where they can connect? You can find me at Alicia B. Kiki on the Twitter and the Instagram. Very nice. Bill, we're gonna get a hold of you, man. They can find me on Twitter at William M. Gardner, J-R-D-N-E-R. And like I said, I this weekend, I'm hoping to do some stuff with the Impact Plus taping on the Instagram. Same thing. And for a little bit of news for you guys that want it, speaking of Twitter, a lot of more verifications today. So once again, just more people will be finding those Impact stars on Twitter. And Bill, you're going this weekend, right? You are off to... Uh... Uh, Georgia, do, uh, yeah, this is uh, Dublin, Georgia, uh, with Lariato Pro Wrestling Guild. There's going to be a Impact Plus with uh, Doc Gallows, the world champion Eric Young, in his first appearance nice. in front of fans. So I will be booing him mightily. Nice, nice, great. Let's definitely get some get some content. We can maybe Heath switch. for Impact and Heath will be, Heath for Impact with it. Very nice, yeah. And Swinger is not on the show anymore, right? He got pulled. He was originally advertised. I still have my fingers crossed that maybe he shows up. I will be wearing my mask, Ingrid. Do not worry. I will be fully covered. I'll be wearing my loca mask. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, definitely report back from there, man. Let us know what's going on. All right, uh, Kaylon, where can they get you? Kaylon on the mic. We should start selling Kaylon Dyke bars. I think that would be good. Me and Bill were talking last night at Hit and Roll. We need, like, food products. Talking about T&I pickles. I think the Kaylon Dyke bar would be <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about T&I Pickles. We were yeah, talking about because there's right. companies that are t-shirt companies that do wrestling. We're going to be a pickle company that does podcasts. Well, no, no, you, you're missing it out. You're missing out on Trent's plug here. We were discussing how Hemi has hot sauce because Bill didn't know that. Sauce. I was plugging the the Hemi hot sauce to Bill, and then that had us. I don't remember if this is on air and off air. Me and Bill are always chatting, but uh, we were saying how. T and I should start having some other products since the T-shirts are doing good. So we're going down the lane of food products, just like the Hemi hot sauce, T and I pickles, Kalon Dyke bars, Alicia B cake mix. I mean, we got it all. <laughs> Alicia B cake mix. <laughs> J Bone, J Bone's bone broth. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> Trent, uh, Trent, Trent's tikka masala. I mean, I we got it. it all. We got Do it, it all, man. Do the it whole all, time, the whole time make different. We we ground up some fresh bones for this soup. You gotta drink awesome. it. Aren't you? Come on. Wouldn't you like a taste of Front Row Bill's sourdough pickle? I, I love it. Sour dill <laughs> pickles and sour Bring dill. that shit on, man. Front Bring Row Bill's uh, sour is a dill family pickles. show. <laughs> Not anymore, it is. Yeah, 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 the Kalon Dyke bar. This is where you offer no. Front Row Front Row Bill sour. Get a get a nice taste of Front Row Bill sourdough pickle. J Bone, where can they find you, please? I didn't even tell you where I am. I'm on KL on the mic, by the way. I didn't even get there. I didn't even get there. KL on the mic. Follow me. I just created a TNI TikTok. You'll be seeing that. That's coming. Oh, I'm sure working on a beer money TikTok. That's not a joke. I sent Trent my first like demo TikTok. I was on the air. Watch. I couldn't watch it. Oh, oh! I thought you played it on the air. Don't do that. No, uh, I'm not playing. Yeah, the uh, the TNI uh, TikTok is coming because you know there's a bunch of old bastards. I, I'm the only millennial on the show, so I got to play that up a little. You know, we got to get into God. things like you that. have fun with that. Yeah, yeah, Germany Christmas. Uh, J Bone, where can they connect with you? You can well, find please. me over on that other little podcast called Smash. This podcast where we're smashing all things wrestling, especially the stuff that that Trent loves the most, like AEW and Monday Night Raw on, and three hours of that shit. That is why. That goes your blood. <laughs> you, you never know who might show up there. Cut his mic. I did just cut his mic, Trent. You can actually click. Oh, the you button. did. Holy cut shit! Mic. You, did. Cut <laughs> mic. Cut mic. <laughs> you can find me on Smash this podcast where I'm watching Monday Night Raw when I'm alone at my tea party. And then KL shows up and makes the show good. That's about it. Uh, fin- finish your goddamn plug, Jay Bone. Go ahead. Finish I think I think you just I think you just did. Um, Smash this podcast is also <laughs> on the Twitter box, Instagram, and and face flop. You can find right, me over on the Twitter here. box <laughs> at Jay Bone fifty one fifty. That's J A Y B O N E fifty one fifty. Very nice. All right, very good. Finally, that took a hell of a fucking long time to get it going. This is the good stuff.
like seems like what's going on there. All right, guys, you can follow me at Treadsberry on Twitter. Also, the show at We Talk Impact, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Just type in We Talk Impact or Total Nonstop Impact, and it comes right up. Give us a follow on there. The show is available on all audio formats: Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Pandora, even as podcast now we are on there too pro wrestling tees.com slash total nonstop impact we have a new shirt up the cast of character shirt designed by josh paxton is up thank you to everybody who bought a shirt during the sale uh as we always mention if you did buy a shirt you can come on the show and you can come hang out with us on the open forum show on sunday or throwback up to you which one you want to be on so let us know you definitely are welcome to be a guest on one of the shows if he bought a t-shirt so i tried booking lakers but he didn't get back to me yeah. oh uh, Lakers! i don't know what's up with this lakers you and fuck get... fuck the t-shirt anybody could come on hit and run if you venmo me a couple of dollars that's just so that i'm gonna plug there. hit and run in a second don't worry okay, give me a okay. second i'm gonna get to it in a second take it easy all right we got a new discord total non-stop impact on discord the discord group i just joined it too a lot of good conversations going on in there as well uh twitch.tv slash total non-stop impact is also going on that is our our primary home. We love to be on Twitch. So thank you guys, all the new subscribers. We are like two, Bitch. we are like two subs away from another emote on Twitch. The Swinger and Tanae one are up. Vote on who you want to be the third emote, guys. Uh, there has been some talk of Susie. Susie. Alicia put out Susie. It should I be back, Susie. I, I think Susie. I think it should be the alpha male Monty Brown personally. But Susie's throw your votes cool. in. Everybody vote on this. Get your get your votes in. Yeah, I'm with Susie. In the I'm comments, put it on Discord, dude. Put it. Put it on Discord, Wherever put it on want. Twitter at We Talk Impact, Facebook at We Talk Impact. Let us know uh, who you want. So I'm going with Susan, by the way. Uh, what am we'll, I forgetting? We'll, we'll, we'll start a poll on, on Twitter and, and spread it around. We'll get a list of names and put out a couple different polls, and then we'll have like a, a grand slam, mega holy shit event with the, with the finals. Yes. Who, who the I'm fuck is Jaylon? Jaylon. Jaylon and Jaylon? Jaybone and Jaybone and Jaylon. All right. Kyle has a new show. Kyle, talk about the the hit and run. All right, Tell us what it's let's, let's, let me let me uh, sum this up for you quick. So uh, life Real has quick. been throwing curveballs at me. Oh, I, I walk into work, they tell me, "Oh, you're back on mornings." So I'm like, "Oh, I'm I'm gonna do the T and I show full out." And then the day before, literally the day before, as in yesterday, they come to me like, "Oh, actually." Uh, you have to go back to nights, and you have to stay till 12 instead of 11. So it's just like there's just life just slapping me upside the head. So I figure we, we got to do something. We got to make this work because I can't just leave this channel. You know what I mean? So now it's like from here on out, I got to crash the last five minutes of this show, make the after show my bitch, and then run the hit and run. Now, the hit and run, it's going to be – which is fucked up because I promised it was going to be 10 minutes. I actually said it was going to be five minutes. Then me and Bill went for 40 minutes, but it was still minutes. good. Still good. Good stuff. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to do the hit and run, which is going to be kind of like a recap review at the end of the week. But I'm oh. hosting it. I'm hosting it so you know what to expect. Leave it at that. Lots of scumbaggery. Uh, you see Bill on there a lot. I'm going to rotate the guest. I'm going to bring all you guys on, which means everybody except for J-Bone. And uh, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, the, the impact hit and run. KL's hit and run. Oh, I'm oh, I'm invading that shit. Yeah, J-Bone right. made an appearance. Uh, J-Bone, no, J-Bone's done enough hit and runs in his life. Just ask checkers. Ask no, rallies. Exactly. They know. Cut, they cut know. his mic right there. All right, guys. Don't forget. <laughs> you know, <laughs> was had, that who was vacuuming earlier? Somebody was. I don't know. Somebody was vacuuming earlier. Um, I want to thank, thank, they, ugh, thank David Penzer again for joining us at the top of the yes. show for an amazing hour he gave us. The legendary voice of... The ring announcer of Impact Wrestling, yeah. legendary former WCW announcer as well. He is the man. Thank you to David Penzer. Bison of TNI UK also has a long form sit down interview with Penzer on the channel under the TNI UK um, playlist on the YouTube channel at Total Nonstop Impact. So he's got a longer uh, sit down with David if you want to listen to that. But we got ours. We asked a bunch of different questions. Listen, Kyle, give me a break here. Well, I'm trying to get a plug. He called me a pussy. He I know. We'll talk. We're, 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 that we'll wanker, after, that after, bloody I'm, wanker called me a don't, pussy. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We're going to talk about an after dark. And guys, we're moving <laughs> the list over for <laughs> a bonus <laughs> discussion <laughs> on TNI After Dark on Twitter at We Talk Impact on Twitter. Go connect with us there. We're going to be going live in about maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll be on Twitter for an after dark bonus uh, discussion. So just to kind of tie in a couple little topics, extra talk that we didn't get to on the show or want to elaborate more on, we'll talk about that on After Dark. Guys, I think that does it. Am I forgetting anything? Anything, Bill? 
I'm going to go to you for this. I'm going to forget it. No, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think we uh, we covered pretty much everything. You got got all the plugs in. I, oh, yeah. I think I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty hey, good. The, the uh, Penzer interview oh, went fantastic. You guys did great with the Penzer interview. But obviously, you know, I was the best on the interview. I, I had the most hard-hitting questions, <laughs> right, the best chemistry me. with him. Yeah, that, that's my guy. All right, guys, thank you very much. That was a September 8th, 2020 yeah. edition of Impact Wrestling. We appreciate it, guys. We'll see you on Thursday for the throwback show, NWA TNA number 41. Get on Impact Plus. Give it a watch. Hang out with us. We're going to do a review for it. Guys, thank you very much. Have yep. a great week, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you later. Find me the name of this garbage show again that I'm on. Total nonstop Impact. My name's John Capital, letter E, period, bravo. And you're listening to the Total Nonstop Impact Podcast. This is the Jaw Jacket. Tuesday night impacting. His mother called him son because he shines like one. Mocha skin manimal. Rohit Raju. And you are watching Total Nonstop Impact. This is Tayala Huera Loca, and you are listening to Total Nonstop Impact. The Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Total Nonstop Impact. We are the, the Rascals. Rascals. And you are listening to Total Non-stop impact podcast, baby. Woo! And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.